Check one, two. Check. Check one, two. That's all the way up. It is going out out there. Why? Why, 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 why? It's not getting to the compressor. Something's wrong here. It worked earlier. Check one, two. Uh, had to had noise. Check, check. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Do, 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 do. We may be without speakers tonight, but we're getting to the, the TV feed, which is the important thing tonight. Input. Output. We're not getting any input. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check, check one, two, one, two.
Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in to AntiochSpeedway.tv. Hot laps taking place right now. My name's Wiley Wade, sitting next to Joe Peterson. Joe, we got the uh, the Hobby Socks out hot lapping right now. And that first car coming up off turn number two, the 22 of Travis Dutra. He has had a rough couple of outings the last two times out. The last two times out, he's been on the racetrack with that car? Yeah. Um, beginning of the year, it looks like he started off pretty good. Just ran into some bad luck and some misfortune, but it uh, looks like he can possibly turn it around tonight. Lost two motors in the last two races. So he's hoping to not lose a third motor. Uh, behind him at 24M, that is Larry McKenzie in that 24M car. Then we fall back to the 100RY. That's Maddie Klimans, uh, what, third generation at least racer. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, third out generation. The, uh, um, I've seen her come up through the karting ranks and outlaw car ranks. I look forward to her um, getting more laps on the track and uh, getting better and getting used to the hobby stop. So she stepped up from the uh, carts to the hobby stocks and out here. This is her second time out in that particular car. I think she came out once last year as well. So getting ready to let these guys or get these guys off the racetrack. And we got some, uh, I think, modifieds getting ready to come out.
uh, Tricky Troy Folger. And behind him, you have the kid, last year's track champion in the 28K, uh, Chester Niss. Coming into turn one, you have the 83 of Kellen Chadwick. Sliding up the racetrack, you have your B4, uh, Bobby Montavo. And your O3, you have Kimo Ortega. Coming down the front straightaway. Checker flag is out.
Check, check. Check, check. Check, check. Check, check, check. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Antioch Speedway and AntiochSpeedway.tv. Antioch Speedway TV is up and running. Right now, we got the first heat race of the evening. The four bangers are out there putting the first heat race into the book. We got Jess Palladino in the uh, 23 car, but right now, out front, taking the checkered flag, Trevor Jolly. Trevor Jolly with the win. Jess Palladino in second. Jess won the heat race in the main event last time out for the four beggars. Hello, everybody. I'm Wiley Wade. And next to me, Joe Peterson with Antioch Speedway TV. Welcome to the new platform for all the racing action here at Antioch Speedway. Joe, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. I'm excited. Um, looking for a good night of racing and um, some action-packed um, act, uh, action going on here at the Race Speedway today. Tonight at Antioch Speedway, we got the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, the Hobby Socks, and the Four Bangers for your racing enjoyment. And rolling out right now is heat race number one for the Hobby Socks, so we better get inside and get ready to go. Let's get to it. All right, that's Antioch Speedway, Antioch Speedway TV. Heat race number one for the Hobby Stocks. Get the list up. Starting lineup looks like this on the Hobby Stock Heat race number one on the point. James Thompson out of Pittsburgh, California in 18T out of Hot Shots Motorsport Photography and Big D's Garage Doors sponsorship on that car. Outside of him, the 17 car. You'll know this name. Quick Nick DiCarlo out of Martinez. Jay's Welding, CPT Racing, and Baxter Built sponsorship on that car. And in the second row, you have the 29 of uh, Jacob Bencourt out of Brentwood, California, and the Brentwood Brothers Constructions East West Renewals. And next to him on the outside, you have the squirrel, Brian, the squirrel, Bree Truen. Bree Truen out of Antioch, California. Row three, the 20 car. That is Jay Josh Leach this week out of Antioch, and outside of him, uh, the 44. G. And as they get set to come out of turn four and take the green flag. Green flag in the air. Down the front straightaway. Into turn number one, James Thompson on the point. Here comes quick Nick DiCarlo. He's uh, <clears throat> excuse me, into the second spot in that 17 car. Quick Nick stepping out of the modified, saving that modified for this week's adventures in the California Tour. Up off turn number one, James Thompson with the lead, lap one. And in third place, we have Bree Troen. She took it over third place, and looks like James Thompson is going to steal away with the lead right now. Quick Nick DiCarlo having some trouble sliding up the racetrack in turn two. Oh. Bree Troen still holds on to the second place position. James Thompson, it looks like he's running away with the lead. The squirrel down to turn number one. She's got Josh Leach down at her inside that battle for second place. Coming up off turn number two. Squirrel gets just a little bit loose on the exit of turn number two, but Leach on the inside not able to take advantage, but he does get, does get down to turn number three first. Does a slide job at the line. It is Thompson halfway done, three down, three to go. With the power move coming out of turn four, Leach takes over second place from Bree Troen, and James Thompson continues to just run away with the lead for now. Quick Nick DiCarlo still having a little troubles coming out of turn two. Looks like he's getting it set. Two laps remain. Thompson down to turn number one. Josh Leach second. Bree throwing in the third spot. Quick Nick DiCarlo 
in the fourth spot. Fifth is the 29 of Jake Benecourt, and sixth is the 44G. As we continue on down into turn number three, Thompson still way out front. That car on a rail last time out. He almost won the main event before he lost his muffler. A white flag's out for James Thompson. And like I said, looks like he's just running away with the lead. Has a nice lead on everybody. Leach in second place, Troen in third. And looks like Nick DiCarlo is trying to get a piece of the action right now. Coming down the back stretch. How, how? Oh, it looks like he's going to send in the inside, but. Thompson uh, with the win. Troen's going to hold on to it to get third place, and quick Nick's going to come home fourth. Josh Leach second. Troen in the third spot. So those three cars transfer. We are doing a B main tonight. Quick Nick DiCarlo will have to go to the uh, B main, as well as the 29 of Jake Benecourt, and at the back of the pack, the 44G of James Gracely. Taking home those top three spots again, James Thompson in first, Josh Leach and the squirrel, Bree Trowan, all going to the big show straight out of their heat race. Heat race number two coming up. Thompson able to hold on with a very commanding win here in heat race number one. Heat race number two looks like this on the point. It's a 38 car out of Dos Palos, California with Dos Palos Mini Storage Sponsorship 38 of Ryan Hart. Outside the front row, the 69 car, Robert Niven out of Concord, California. JJ's auto painting on that car. And in the inside, in the 14, you have Logan, Fern Logan Fernandez out of Antioch, California. And to his outside, the number seven of uh, Dustin Don uh, Donathan. Out of Dustin Merced, Donovan California. out of Merced, California. The second, their third and final row, the 100 RY of Maddie Clemens out of Oakley. Unique Breeds and Clemens Motorsports Sponsorship. And the 47 car of Gavin Griffiths out of Brentwood, California. Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, and Big Sky Investments on that 47 car. Six cars for this three, or excuse me, hit six lap heat race for... Heat races for the Hobby Stocks here tonight. With the B-Main coming up, top three will transfer. Got a couple cars in this race that are new to Antioch Speedway. The 38 car of Ryan Hart out of Dos Palos. And the 7 car, Dustin Donovan out of Merced, are both here. And as they slowly come out of, oh, it looks like they're going to go around one more time. Coming around to the green flag, here they go. Green flag in the air. Down the front straightaway. The 38 of Ryan Hart has a good run up off turn number four. He gets down to turn number one, though, and that car pushes up the hill like a dump truck. Robert Niven has to get way up out, out, out and around to keep from plowing into him. They get it straightened away. Hart down into turn three and four. Now, these turns are quite different. Turns one and two on the south end and turns three and four. But Ryan Hart's the leader at turn number one. Hart's going to hold on to the lead, and he's going to seal it away. And coming out of a low, it looks like the 69 is going to gain on him. Oh, but he runs away with the lead. Coming into turn three and coming out of turn four, it's going to be Hart holding on to the lead. Ryan Hart with the lead. Robert Niven second. We got Gavin Griffiths in the third spot. Fourth is a seven car of Dustin Donovan. And at the back of the pack is Maddie Clemens out of Oakley. Out, uh, and also the 14 car of Logan Fernandez. That car not running quite as well as he's been running lately. He is a rookie. Last lap, a 20.24 second lap, 66.700 miles an hour. Up off turn number four, battle for the lead, going down the front straightaway. And Ryan Hart and Neven doing battle, and it looks like Neven is going to, oh, they're going to do side by side coming down the back stretch. Oh, and it looks like they're going to have to split the 14. Robert Niven had to get out of the gas to keep from rear-ending the back of the Logan car. Up off turn number four, down the front straightaway. Hart still on the point. Robert Niven in the 69 car. He always runs a different kind of car. He's got that Camaro out there. Bumps a little bit into the back of Hart coming up off turn number two. In our third spot out of Brentwood, Gavin Griffiths in that 47. While those top two are racing, Griffiths is making up a little bit of ground. White flag in the air one more time around. Uh, looks like Hart's going to push up the track. White flag's out. They're going to do battle again down the back stretch. Looks like the 69. Oh, no, it's going to be Hart. Oh, he's going to push once more. Oh, they're going to do battle down the front stretch. Who's going to take the... Oh, it's going to be Hart for the win. Hart with the win. Niven second. That's how they started the race. Griffith started back in the pack. He finished third. Those three cars transferred to the main event. Then he got the seven car. He gets the fourth spot. That is uh, Dustin Donovan. 
the Matty Clements car finishes in the fifth spot and Logan Fernandez in that sixth and final spot. Got some debris in the back straight away, I'm hearing. So Ryan Hart, winner of heat race number two for the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks here tonight. Nice race between uh, uh, Robert Niven. Second time out this year. I think he was out one, out, one, out one other time earlier in the season. Niven, a longtime runner here at Antioch Speedway in the number 69. Heat race number three, uh, number three looking like this. On the point. Out of Oakley, California, big investments is a sponsorship on that car. It's Gene Haney outside the front row, the 27 car of Craig Tatum out of Merced, Stockton Produce, and Smiles Auto Care sponsorship on that car. Oh, and in the 22D, looks like you're going to have Travis Dutrill out of uh, Martinez, California. And in the number 46, you're going to have Colton Haney out of Brentwood, California in the Lucky Dog Racing, Flat Tire Racing, Big Sky Investments. And in our third and final row on the inside, it's going to be Jewel Crandall out of Antioch, California. And outside of her will be the 71A of Michaela Taylor out of Oakley, California. Climbers Racing Enterprises, Climbers Motorsports and Cart Supplies, Trevor's Junk Sponsorship on that 71A. A lot of great young Men and women are out here racing uh, these days. And at the back of the pack, two young ladies um, starting back there. It's nice to see this next generation coming up, Joe. Yeah, it is always good to see them at least start in a beginner class where they can learn the fundamentals of racing and, um, you know, what's it take to be competitive and a, a great driver on the track. Three of four heat races for the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Coming around to the green flag, the light is off. Gene Haney, who drives multiple divisions here at Antioch Speedway. He's been, uh, they have a three-car team over there, the 45, 46, and 47. Gene Haney, Colton uh, Haney, and Gavin Griffiths. Gene Haney on the point. Green flag in the air. We're going racing. Haney down to turn number one on the low side, but on the high side, Craig Tatum. Driving around him on that exit of turn number two. Put Tatum on the point. Haney back to second. Here comes Travis Dutra, hoping to not blow an engine tonight after blowing two engines in the last two events for the uh, Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Dutra fast, stepped up from the Dwarf cars, and he is fast in these Hobby Stocks. Yeah, and then, like you said before, I think Dutra's really want to get back on his winning ways here. As you can see, he clearly just takes the lead right now. The car looks like it is going to be on rails tonight. He pushes up a little bit. Um, Still slingshotting out of turn four, and he's going to be your leader. Dutra down the front straightaway into turn number one. He's got Tatum on his bumper about a car length back then. The Gene Haney's in that third spot. That is a third and final transfer spot. Haney locks up the left front wheel in the middle of turns one and two. Uh, in the fourth spot is Colton Haney. Fifth is a 71A of Michaela Taylor, and then at the back is Jewel Crandall. Dutra and Taney look like they're running away with the lead right now with the number 45 of uh, Gene Haney um, in the third spot. Looks like they're pretty spread out. Uh, Up off turn number four, Travis Dutra at the line. Two laps remain in this six-lap heat race. 71.090 miles an hour was that last lap. 18.99 seconds. This, fat, this track will get faster as the night goes on right now. Still a little bit slick for these cars. Dutra up off turn number four, working the high side, almost up to the cushion. White rag, white flag in the air one more time around. <laughs> Pretty cool to see Dutra just rail in the outside like that as he comes down the back stretch. And like I said, it looks like he just clearly has the race one. It looks like the 27 of uh, Tatum looks like he has possibly blown up. Uh, there's oh, and he's slowing down the back stretch. There's a lot of oil coming through turns one and two at the line. It is Travis Dutra with the win. Tatum's going to cross second, but uh, yeah, unless that something's fixable, he's got fluid all over the racetrack. Haney's going to finish in the third spot. Fourth is going to be uh, Colton Haney. Uh, fifth will be the 71A of Michaela Taylor, and sixth will be Jewel Crandall. Lots of fluid to clean up over there. The three transfer spots for this one, of course, Travis Dutra. Uh, the Craig Tatum and Gene Haney all transferring to the main show. But the problem is, at least for Craig Tatum, is was that a motor? Or was that just a, a radiator hose or something they can fix? 
uh, possibly it's not something major and he can get back out. It looks like uh, they might be possibly pushing him. Looks like he might have stalled on the on the exit. But uh, yeah, that's good. Um, I just heard over the radio there's a water, they found a water pump and a crushed pan or something. Just listen to the radio. So we're gonna get them uh, Get that, get that fixed out and figure it out. Someone may get to get in when, without uh, making it if he can't come to the main show. Heat race number four. It's time to go racing for that. Uh, we're going to run him through it, but on the point. Out of Oakley, California, Jerry Fraser, Crusher Assisted, Streamline Fabrication, Grandma and Grandpa Sponsorship. Brand new number this week for Aiden Ponciano. No longer the number 22 because we ended up with a lot of 22s around here. So he changed his number to the 225. 225 is Aiden Ponciano. Outside the front row, the 27Z. Uh, again, a former straight liner, a new oval tracker here this year. And running actually pretty well for uh, being a straight liner. Brentwood Embroidery, first stop, wheels and tires, sponsorship on the 27Z of Nicholas Zapatero. And in the second row on the inside, the 24M out of Antioch, California, it is Larry McKenzie. And in the number 03 out of Vacaville, California, you have Philip Ortega. Philip Aretta? The flying Hawaiian Kimo Aretta's son in that uh, 03 car, Philip Aretta, driving that to the Hot Shots Motorsports Photography, D&D Rears and Gears, Delta Calls, Waterfowl Calls, and Geo Racing, and Maloney Auto Repair sponsorship on that car. Going to run these cars through the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Coming uh, quickly, getting our four heat races up and over with. Hopefully I didn't say that too soon because... We still have one to go. Six laps coming up for Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks for some great racing action. Thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, to AntiochSpeedway.tv. It's Antioch Speedway TV. Keep on the lookout, folks. This is not all you're going to get. We are going to be doing some shows and stuff. Wiley's Racing Report will also be brought or a simulcast on, on here. Um, on some points, but we are going to have a lot of fun with this platform. During the week, you'll be able to catch things, um, some of our shows on Antioch Speedway by Promotions on Facebook. Antioch Speedway by Promotions and also AntiochSpeedway.tv on Facebook. Both those Facebook pages. If you haven't uh, checked them out and liked them and followed them, make sure you go and do so because that's all the places you want to be. Plus, don't forget mine, of course, is Antioch Speedway announcer on both YouTube and Facebook. We're going to give them the one-to-go signal. We're going to go racing next time by with Aiden Ponciano on that point. The 27Z uh, of Nicholas Zapatero outside the front row. Larry McKenzie and Philip Aretta in row two and row three is going to be George Silva and Jason Robles out of Rio Vista. Robles with Flavor of Trucking, a Mama Bear Child Care Sponsorship, and George Silva, he's out of Merced, California. And it looks like as they slow the pace, they're going to be taking the green flag as they roll into turn three and get ready to come out of turn four. And it looks like the, oh, the 225 is going to, oh no, it's going to be the 27Z of Zambardo. Zapatero down to turn number one first, but he's up in that slick stuff where the Blown uh, whatever it was, all the fluid down. But he still has a nice run, and it looks like he's possibly going to be holding on to the lead. Oh, can he take it? Can Yes, he's going to take the lead, and he's going to have lap one in the books. Pontiano getting very loose in the middle of three and four that time. Lost about a car length and a half to Zapatero, but he battles back now. Larry McKenzie trying to get underneath Pontiano, but... Uh, Again, not quite close enough. And Ponciano, once again, in that midpoint between uh, one and two, last time by in three and four, that car getting a wee bit loose. And as you can see, the track has a nice, it looks like it's building a nice little cushion where the drivers can kind of ride off of it and slingshot down the straightaways as the 27 of Nicholas Zambertero is going to still be able to hold on to the lead. And, yep, he's going to lead lap number three. Halfway done, three down, three to go. Nicholas Zapatero on the point, but here comes Larry McKenzie on the inside, side by side up off turn number four. That high side pays off for Zapatero as his car gets better bite down the back stretch. Beaches uh, McKenzie into turn number three. McKenzie battles back on the inside, two to go, this time by Zapatero at the line. But McKenzie is stalking. He's stalking in the inside. It looks like he likes that lane. 
one high. We have two distinct lanes. We have a high side and a low side, and it looks like McKenzie's gonna shoot down again to the inside and try to get a run. As you can see, Zebentero, he's gonna still slingshot off the high side. It looks like, oh, they're side by side as the white flag's out. At that line right there, McKenzie had the lead by about two feet as they crossed the line. McKenzie now clearly out in front of Zapatero slipped up a little too high in turn number two, loses two car lengths down the back straight away into turn number three. Zapatero tries to drive back, cross over underneath, but he's not anywhere near close enough. McKenzie taking home the win in that 24M. Zapatero second, leaves the racetrack in a hurry. Pontiano in the third spot. Those three are going to transfer. Fourth is going to be the uh, Philip Aretta car. Fifth, George Silva. And sixth, Jason Robles. Something wrong with Robles. That car normally runs much stronger than that. But our final three transfer cars uh, right from the main event. Larry McKenzie taking home the main event or the heat race win, heat race number four. He's going to the main event as well as Zapatero in the 27Z, Nicholas Zapatero. And in the third spot would be Aiden Ponciano in the 225. So that's going to do it for our Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stock heat races. Up next, we've got the. Uh, IMCA Sport Modifieds coming out. They're going to do a little bit of packing. That gives us a little time to uh, get a good lineup going here for you on the Sports Modified on the point for heat race number one. Out of Livermore, West, uh, Westmore Racing, Victory Coding sponsorship on the 19E of Matthew Elmore out of Livermore. And outside the 15P of Andrew Pierce out of Oakley Pro Motorsports, Monumental Insurance Services, Stone, Stone Manure Money Spreading sponsorship on that car. Oh, yeah, you got to get that one. Kid smooth. Uh, and then in the second round, inside, you have the 19C of Tommy Clemens Jr. out of Oakley, California. Uh, the Clemens Racing Enterprises, Clemens Motorsports and Cart Supplies, Trevor's Junk, BS Racing, East Bay Welding Supplies, Tommy Clemens in the 19C. And then to your outside of him, you have the 112 of Chuck Crash Golden out of Concord, California, and the Select One Realtor, Mike's, Mike's Apparel. Um, Tat Speed and Machine United trans, trans permission, uh, Transmission, I'm sorry, uh, DT's Bolt Shops. Uh, Row 3, we got the uh, the 2019 defending champion, the Iceman and Tommy Frazier, custom roof and custom tile specialist, Antioch Muffler and Sigs for less sponsorship on that car outside the third row, the 262. That's Tony Pfeiffer out of Modesto at WC Maloney sponsorship on that car. And in the last row, you have the 75A of Anthony Wellborn out of Castro, out of, um, I'm sorry, Castro Valley, California. And in the M27, and the 27M, I'm sorry, you have the kid, Jacob Mallet Jr. out of uh, Livermore, California. Young man stepped up from the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks into the Sport Modifieds a couple weeks ago. Looking forward to have some fun in the Sport Modifieds. And it is on my list. It is 27M, but it is M27 on the car. So it is M27 in that gray car. That's a beautiful race car right now. He's already run it. This is the second time out with this car. Was out here two weeks ago. The Severed Metal and Oakley Ace. Les Schwab of Oakley. Mom and Dad sponsorship on that car. They got rid of their hobby stock and went Sport Modified racing. IMCA Sport Modifieds. These guys are going to be back on Wednesday night. Special, special event on Wednesday night. It is the California Tour. The IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds are touring the state of California. Five days, five racetracks, five races. Wednesday night they come here. I'd like to welcome our folks on Facebook at Antioch Speedway Buyer Promotions, Antioch Speedway Buyer Promotions, and AntiochSpeedway.tv on Facebook. You're getting a live look in as live racing action continues right here on Antioch Speedway TV. If you want to see all tonight's action, head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv for all the live racing action you can handle right here at Antioch Speedway tonight. IMC modify, IMCA Sports Modifies, Hobby Socks, and Four Bangers. Right now, we got the sport mods going, and I and think this one's going to get called back. back. Yeah, that one's going to get called back. Bob, oh, they're the, not. They're going to let it go. Chuck Crash Golden takes the lead. Tommy Clemens Jr. And now we're going to. That one, uh, Bob doesn't throw the yellow until they all get through so they don't stack up. So that's the yellow and red flag. You see, fabulous Bob out there. 
Hey, I want to say thanks to a fabulous Bob and all the officials. We got Matt and Mike and Carl and Steven and Rich down the other end of the booth here. I want to say thanks to all the folks that act as officials here at Antioch Speedway. Also want to say thanks to all the folks that come out and work as a DNF crew. The uh, did not finish crew. They just volunteer their time to come out and help us clean up the incidents and accidents. And we hope to keep them very bored. Quite frankly, we don't want them to have anything to do. But, oh, uh, yeah. But Looks like we're going to try this for the second time as they roll out of turn three. But without the uh, DNF crew, we cannot go racing. All right, green flag in the air. That's a better start. There we go. we got Tom Clemens Jr. down on the low side. Tr crash Golden on the high side. Here comes Fraser. He tries to get underneath Golden. Golden shuts the door. Coming up off turn number two. Down the back straightaway. Tom Clements Jr. on the point. Coming up off turn number four. Working about a car width up from the bottom of the racetrack. And Tom Clements Jr. is going to hold on to the lead. You have Chuck Crash Golden in second and the Iceman Fraser in third. And like I said, it looks like the track has two nice, distinct lanes. Uh, right now, Tommy Climbers Jr. running that inside, and he's going to hold on to the lead. Climbers down to turn number one. Oh, and it looks like the M27 has possibly lost a motor. Uh, that is Jacob Malley Jr. He rolls into the infield. Something wrong with the M27. We'll take a look at that. I don't see any fluid coming out on the ground, but Tom Clements Jr. up off turn number four. Crosses the line. 16.70 seconds, 80.838 miles an hour. That last lap. Chuck Golden in the second spot. Third is Tommy Fraser. Fourth is a 262 of Tony Pfeiffer. Fifth is Andrew Pierce. Sixth is the 19E of Matthew Elmore. And seventh is Andrew Wellborn. Halfway done. Four down, four to go. As Tommy Clemens Jr. C rolls out of turn two, he has a nice lead over Chuck Crashcoat and Tommy Fraser. We Whoa, got three we cars piled up down at turn number one. Andrew Wellborn pounding his steering wheel. He is not happy. I think that may have started with Tony Pfeiffer in the uh, 262. Wait and find out in the 19E of Matthew Elmore involved. I think he just spun to avoid all that. So once again, if you're on Facebook watching, just head on over to AntiochSpeedway.tv, AntiochSpeedway.tv. Uh, that is the place like to be. Andrew Wellborn has a broken... Andrew like Wellborn, flat right front tire looking... That right front is flat by the looks of it. Listen to the radio. They are saying the 262 is the one that uh, is going to get the black flag. Of course, one and done. That means you'd bring out the yellow flag one time in heat races. You're done for the for that heat race. You get to come back for the B main if there's a B main. There's not for the uh, sport mods tonight, but uh, you get to come back for the main event. And it looks like they're going to give the black flag, unfortunately, to Tony Perfa out of uh, Modesto, California. He's going to have to take it back to the pits. So the other cars are lining up. Looks like they are going to put Wellborn on the hook in that 75A car. So your lineup right now on the point. Tom Climbers Jr. in the 19C. Behind him is Crash Golden in that 112 car. That blue car over there out of Concord, California. Then we have Tommy Frazier in the 12 car. Andrew Pierce, young man, in the 15P. Out of Oakley, California at the back of the pack. It is the 19C. Our 19E of Matthew Elmore. Lots of great racing action in store for you tonight. Again, I was talking about the... Uh, the tour race coming up on Wednesday night. Unfortunately, that will not be on AntiochSpeedway.tv. Unfortunate for us, because I think that's fun. But it will be on SpeedShift TV. They have the entire series. Everything will be, uh, if you want to watch all five nights of the California tour, it is on SpeedShift TV. And you can see all the fun and exciting racing action. But Joe and I will be back next Saturday night. We'll actually, I think we'll probably do something Wednesday night. I think we'll probably do the hobby stocks. But uh, next Saturday night, we'll be back, of course, with all the racing action for your racing enjoyment right here on AntiochSpeedway.tv. You don't want to miss it. And next Saturday night, of course, it is the wingless sprint cars, the Delta Dwarf cars, the Super Stocks, and only come a couple times a year. I love seeing these cars. The BCRA Midgets are going to be here. Yeah, um... Interested in seeing the midgets here. Um, see how they do on a on a bigger on a three eighths mile track like this, high bank. So it should be fun. 
Got a Texas style restart. Got to get these uh, Texas style restart going up and cleared. Oh, so six nights. I'm sorry, six nights. Why was I thinking five nights? Six nights. We're, we're night three. So there we go. Now we got them lined up. So in case you're new to Antioch Speedway, we do what's called Texas-style restarts. That means the leader gets a row to himself. He gets to start high, low, medium, wherever he wants on that front row because he has it to himself. Row two, the second-place car gets to choose high side or low side. And it looks like Chuck Crash Golden is elected to take the high side, which I wouldn't blame him. Now, that is around this racetrack, that has typically been the place you want to be. You get a good momentum up off the turn. He put Tommy Frazier on the low side. We're back under the green flag down the front straightaway into turn number one. Tom Clements. Here comes Frazier. He gets out in front of Golden. That's what he needed, an opportunity to get up next to Golden. He was struggling to get around that 112. He made it that time. We're coming around to complete lap number five. Three to go in this eight-lap heat race. Oh, and Tommy Climbers Jr. still leading, but here comes Tommy Frazier, the Iceman. Sliding up, and he's going to come down the back stretch. Let's see if he can gain and pass Tommy Climbers Jr. He's been nice on that high side. Looks like he's touching that cushion. Up off. A little bit, but he still has the lead down the front straightaway. Yellow. No, I thought I heard something on the radio. Climbers coming up off turn number two down the back straightaway. Two car lengths over Tommy Frazier. Frazier working just a little bit lower on the racing surface than Clemens. His white flag in the air one more time around. Clemens has trouble at turn number two. He suddenly had to slam on the brakes. That allowed Tommy Frazier the inside line. They're now side by side into turn number three. Oh, here they come doing battle. It looks like the Iceman's going to take the win. Something suddenly happened to Tom Clemens Jr. That car is suddenly on both ends of the racetrack. Shoots up in the middle of the turns. And that is going to give the win to Tommy Frazier that time. With the last lap pass, the Iceman, Tommy Frazier, is going to take the heat race win. Uh, Tommy Clemens Jr. is in second place. Chuck Crash Golden, uh, round out third. Uh, Kid Smooth, Andrew Pierce, take home fourth. And in the 19E, you have um, Matthew Elway is going to round out the top five. Heat race number one in the books, the Iceman stealing one. But that's, uh, that's how it goes. you got to get to the checkered flag first. Otherwise, you are out of it. Heat race number two looks like this on the point. Ryan Graham out of Brentwood, California into 28 car outside the front row. The 42J. Jason Jennings stepping up from the hobby stocks ranks after taking a year off out of Pittsburgh. Scott and Jess Foster, Caps Coding, and Kellen Chadwick Motorsports sponsorship. Yes, and then in, in the inside uh, row two, you have the 17B of Kevin Brown out of Oakley with the Bridgehead Cycles, Bridge Cafe. My wallet, <laughs> cousin Tom lost his <laughs> son just. Let's go next. And then in the two C, you have a uh, Trevor Clymans, and uh, out of Brentwood, California, in the GRT chassis, unique breeds. Clymans Motorsports, Trevor's Junk, Clymans Racing Enterprises, Aerial Control, and the two C, Trevor Clymans. Row three, the 76 car. That is Mark Garner. He's out of Oakley, California. Sabrina's Pizza, VFW Post 6435, and all specs sheet metal sponsorship on that car. And outside of him, the 156 of Jacob Haas out of Antioch, California. At the back of the pack, Tyler Brown out of uh, Oakley, California. Bargains Custom Flooring sponsorship on that car. And as they roll out of turn four. Oh, they get kind of squirrely. It looks like Jason Jennings is going to take the high side, and he's going to try to roll by the number 28. But here comes Trevor Clemens railing the outside down the straightaway. It looks like he's going to possibly... Oh! No. Jason Jennings still holds on to lead. Trevor Clemens gets a little squirrely. Here comes Mark Gardner for fourth in the inside. The 28 car of Ryan Graham having all kinds of trouble. That car down on the north end of the racetrack. That's turns three and four. That car pushed like a dump truck. He had the wheels turned all the way left, and he was going straight for the wall. Up front, we got Jason Jennings coming up off turn number four, looking for his first checkered flag in a heat race or whatever in the uh, sport modified. Fine. He's got some pressure coming up from behind, though. Kevin Brown in that 17B. Hot on his tails. Then we got Trevor Clymans back there in the third spot. Mark Garner now into the fourth spot, and Jacob Haas in the fifth spot. Jason James is still holding on to the lead with Kevin Brown and Trevor Clemens. Mark Gardner coming up to fourth position. 
It looks like the track is pretty kind of quick. It looks like the inside starting to lay down rubber right now. Jason Jenny still holding on to the top spot. Four down, four to go. We're halfway done. Oh, and it looks like we have the 325 of Tyler Brown around. He's going to come back onto the racetrack. He does it, don't it, around the tire down there in turn number three. Stays under the green flag. Jennings down to turn number one. He's working about three car lengths up from the bottom right now, but the battle's for second. We got Trevor Clymans on the inside of Brown. Brown that time has a better run up off turn number two after Clymans had trouble in the middle of turns one and two. That car suddenly shot up a little bit. He had to get out of the gas, and we are two laps down, or two to go. And Trevor Clymans and Kevin Brown doing battle, just going scrappy back and forth as it looks like Jason Jennings is just running away with the lead right now so far. Mark Gardner in the fourth position. Oh, and it looks like Trevor Clymans is going to get by him coming into turn one. Kevin Brown slips up a little bit. Down the back straight away. We got one car into the wall. That's a 325 of Tyler Brown hitting the wall in the back stretch, but we got a checkered flag coming out. Jason Jennings with his first win in that 42J. Oh, and Trevor Climbers just barely beats Kevin Brown to the line. For, I don't know. Maybe Trevor had a mistake coming out of turn four, but. What a race that was coming to the line for that third or second spot, and Climbers just barely making it. We will have to confirm with Andrea that that is the official call. Two C didn't get it. Okay, so it is official. Trevor Clymans. But the one that's important, the win, goes to Jason Jennings for heat race number two for our IMCA Sport Modifieds. What a great job by Jason Jennings in that 42J. All right, that means we got the, uh, got the hobby stocks down. We got the Sport Modifieds down. Guess what? We're going modified racing. Dirt Modified Racing coming up next. Starting lineup for the Dirt Modifieds. Looks like this on the point out of Livermore, California, Montalvo Motorsports, Delta Transmission, Extreme Racing product sponsored uh, B4 of Bobby Montalvo outside the front row. It is the uh, 2019 defending champion for the Dirt Modifieds here at Antioch Speedway, Delta Transmission, Rebella Racing, Altered Canvas sponsorship. It is a 28K of Chester Ness. And in your second row on the inside, you have the 17T out of Martinez, California. You have Terry DiCarlo. And in the 44S out of Pacifica, California, in the meds floor less, dream clean um, janitorial, slingshot performance, you have Sugar, Shane DeVolder in the 14S, in the 44S, I'm sorry. The Boulder winner uh, for a back uh, back on June 6th. It's been a while, but the, night, the thing about that win, he was running with a bent rear end and a lot of smoke coming out of that race car, but still held on for the win. And row three, it is the winner the last two times out and our points leader out of Oakley, California, Southern, Southern County Lubricants, all flow muffler and auto repair. Chuck's brake and wheel sponsored 49 car. That's Tricky Troy Tr Folger. And outside the front row, or outside the last row, out of Antioch, Bay Area, Safe and Vault, Delta Transmission, Twisted Motorsports, sponsored 68M. It's John McDougall making one of his few appearances. He makes scattered throughout the year. Lots of times he's out back here selling parts. And tonight out here in the race car. Yeah, nice guy. Love to help out the racers and get on the track as well. All right, coming around. No back panel on the 68 here and over the radio. And this is an IMCA event, so that is required. So he's going to have to gonna get the uh, – yeah, that is a requirement of IMCA rules. So uh, John McDougall is going to uh, gonna get punished on that. So we're going to black flag him and get him off the racetrack. Uh, low car count here tonight from what we have been having all season just because everyone is, uh, from what I saw on Facebook, saving their race cars for the California Tour. Yeah, quite a few guys you can see. And um, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty excited for Wednesday night. 
a lot of out-of-town guys should uh, be coming here. So we have a big car count, great race, and hopefully the track is stellar as well. So I told you about Wednesday night. Of course, the IMCA modifieds, IMCA Sport modifieds, and the hobby stocks will all be here. Uh, you can see all the action on Speed Shift TV. That's Wednesday only. Then we'll be back on Antioch Speedway TV next Saturday with the wingless sprints, the Delta Dwarfs, the uh, Super Stocks, Tri-State Pro Stocks, and the BCRA Midgets. The Jerry Hetrick Memorial Race that was originally scheduled for tonight has been moved to August 22nd. I'll talk about that shortly. But right now, I want to let you know we're going to go racing. Bobby Montalvo. Bobby Montalvo has control of the field, and I think we're still waiting for uh, giving John a couple laps. Nope, he's trying to get him off the racetrack, McDougal, getting the black flag. So while we're going around another another time, I'll let you know on Saturday, August 22nd, the Jerry Hetrick Memorial Race with the IMCA Modifines, IMCA Sport Modifines, the Hobby Stocks and the Valley Four Bangers, a repeat of tonight's action. But that'll have a lot more cars here on the Jerry Hetrick Memorial Race as do most of them. On Saturday, August 29th, I'll tell you about that in a bit. Lights out. We're going green flag racing this time by. And it's going to move the row up a bit, and the green flag's going to drop. Montavo, Niss, down into turn one. Niss, it looks like he's going to get a run off the middle. Down the back stretch, he's going to pull the lead. Let's see what Tricky Troy has for him. Oh! In the Not what they, they wanted to see. But they keep it going, and it looks like Terry DeCar is going to lead the first lap. Wow. Not what these cars want. That's part of the reason uh, Shane DeVolder hung back, I think, is to make sure that, that his car didn't get involved in something like that if it happened. But Buddy Niss getting sideways, spinning out in turn number three, but gets collecting. Tricky Troy, Bobby Montalvo, they all straighten out. We stay under the green flag. We're two laps in, four to go. And Folger and DiCarlo going ba doing battle down the backstretch coming out of turn four, and it looks like it's still Terry DiCarlo is going to hold on to the lead. Troy Folger in second. Bobby Montavo with a little, little damage. Battle for the lead coming up off turn number two, but Terry DiCarlo closes the door. Folger was inside him. Terry DiCarlo came down and closed the door. And here comes Folger. He's looking on the inside once again. Up off turn number four, side by side, two to go. Possibly maybe a little frustrated Folger because he is throwing it in as he takes the lead down the back stretch. Down Love watching that guy come from the rear and and put on a show for the for the crowd. White. As he takes the white flag, Troy Folger. Terry white. DiCarlo still in second. White flag in the air. Folger out in front. Terry DiCarlo second. Bobby Montalvo battling Buddy Niss. Niss and Montalvo get together. Niss goes up the racetrack, but out front. It is the 49 car of Tricky Troy Folger taking home the win. Second is going to be Terry DiCarlo. Third is going to be Buddy Niss because Bobby Montalvo let off the gas at the last minute. And he lost a spot in doing so. That's going to give uh, Shane DeVolder in the fifth spot. Last lap of 15.65 second lap, 86.262 miles an hour. This track is getting fast. Oh, yeah. And it's a little surprising. It looks like Shane DeVolder is kind of holding back. I think maybe possibly he's just testing some stuff because I know I did talk to him in the pits and he did say that he wants to run all six nights possibly of the, of the California Tour. Maybe not trying to hurt the car or hurt the motor tonight. Just a little bit of testing here and... Tonight, more of a test and tune for him. Oh, yeah. All right, starting lineup for heat race number two for the IMCA Modifieds on the point. Out of Vacaville, Hot Shots Motorsports Photography, Vallejo Masonry, D&D Enterprises, Rears and Gears. It's the Flying Hawaiian, Kimo Aretta, outside the front row. Out of Livermore, California, All Pro Coatings, JGE, uh, Madaris Transport, and Low Back Racing Mufflers. It's the 097 of Sean DeForest. And in the second row and uh, inside, the uh, number 83 needs no introduction. He won the open show here um, last year in the, the number 83 of Kellen Chadwick. And um, the number six got a victory here uh, two weeks ago. And um, the number six, uh, Jim Pettit. Yeah, Pettit winning back on June 20th. Taking home the win, and row third and final row on the inside, the 15G Giuliani Construction Sponsorship. Anthony Giuliani outside the 61 car. It is Ricky Thatcher out of Mariposa. Thatcher Performance Technologies, Eastwood Industries, and Steve Sportsman Cafe Sponsorship on that race car. The Flying Hawaiian Kimo Oretta with control of the field coming around, and we're coming to the green flag. 
And it looks like they're dropping the green flag, and it looks like it's going to be Sean DeForest. But it looks like Kellen Chadwick was trying to slide his way in there as he gets a little sideways in the inside. Oh, and he pushes. Oh, he pushes up. And still, Sean DeForest holding the lead. It looks like Jim Pettit wants to get racy. He's on the outside. Dig in that GRT, but it looks like Sean DeForest is still going to hold on to the lead. DeForest running was much better, at least in lap number one, than he did last time out with that 097. Uh, but he has got Jim Pettit all over his rear bumper. Pettit looking high, looking low. Goes down into turn number three. DeForest gets loose going to three. They get, they get collected. Jim Pettit collects him. Looks like Pettit might end up with a flat right rear tire, but right now he's still going strong, pushing up the racetrack. Yep, there it goes. He does have a flat right rear, so the sixth car will be done. But meanwhile, up front, here comes Kellen Chadwick up off turn number four, looking to the inside of Sean DeForest. Yellow flag is out. Yeah, yellow flag is out. Looks like he couldn't hold on to that car. Uh, but Sean DeForest still holding on to the lead. Kellen Chadwick sliding into second place. So Jim Bennett's going to have to wait for the main event to come back out. He uh, had his other race car with the open motor down at Watsonville last night. And he's got two cars prepared for the uh, Speed Weeks. So this is car number two. So Jim Pettit out of Prunedale, back to the pits. He is done for this event, uh, for the heat race. He'll be back out for the main event. Our star, our lineup right now, Sean DeForest on the point. Kellen Chadwick is second, third. He, uh, Chadwick takes the low side, puts Kimo Aretta on the high side. Fourth is Anthony Giuliani, and fifth, it's the 61 car of Ricky Thatcher. Going to give him the one-to-go signal at the starter stand. We got four laps remain. And it looks like it was really just about to get good between uh, Jim Pettit and um, Sean DeForest. Looks like they had a nice little battle coming out, coming out of turn four. And Got to wonder if there's any uh, damage on that left front for Sean DeForest. That's where a Pettit hit when uh, DeForest got loose. Pettit got uh, his right rear into Sean DeForest's left front, and there could be potentially be some damage here. But right now we're about to find out, see how well he handles over the next couple laps. Because he's got Kellen Chadwick on his rear bumper. Down the front straightaway into turn number one. Chadwick looks low. They're side by side off turn number two. DeForest is still on the high side. Here comes Aretta getting underneath DeForest into turn number three. Chadwick is our leader coming up off turn number four. Halfway done. Three down, three to go. Oh, and Chadwick takes the lead in the inside. That car is really on rails when it comes to him and the dry and um, running the inside. As we have Sean DeForest still uh, in second place and Kimo Aretta. As Kellen Chadwick's going to lead uh, lap number four. Two to go. We got Kellen Chadwick, Sean DeForest, Kimo Aretta, uh, Anthony Giuliani. The 61 of Thatcher pulls off the racetrack. That puts Pettit is back out. Uh, but he's actually black flagged, I believe. White flag in the air one more time around. And white flag's going to be out for uh, Kellen Chadwick. A couple more turns down the straight. Let's see if he can hold on to the lead. Out of turn three and out of turn four, Kellen Chadwick's going to take the victory. And second is going to be Sean DeForest. And third, Kimo Aretta. Fourth place is going to be Anthony Giuliani. And sixth place, we have uh, Jim Pettit. Kellen Chadwick with another checkered flag here tonight. He'd race number two for the... IMCA Dirt Modifieds. Hey! Wow, that was fast. Some great heat racing. We are done with heat races. So with that, it's intermission time. Last lap of 15.78 uh, second lap. 85.551 miles an hour for Kellen Chadwick. He's driving the white car tonight. Yes, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. Him driving the white car uh, could p potentially be him saving his other car for, um, I know, I believe he's racing speed weeks as well. I don't know how many nights, but I know he's going to um, touch with some bases on those tracks. Um, so, yeah, potentially, possibly another guy saving his car for uh, speed week. So. A lot of... Uh a lot of cars getting ready for this speed California Speed Weeks. Thanks for tuning in here on Antioch Speedway TV. Do appreciate you spending your time and money with us. And we have some great racing action coming up.
uh, tonight with the IMC Modifieds, Dirt Modifieds, Hobby Stocks, and the Four Bangers. Got one car taking some hot laps right now. Uh, something's wrong with Logan Fernandez there, the 14 car. He uh, was going very slow during his heat race, and we just lost the PA system again. Um, but we're going to take an intermission. We got the B main for the Jays Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks coming up. Uh, further into our schedule coming up on Saturday, August 29th, the Delta Dwarf cars, the Wingless Sprint cars, the Super Stocks, and the Pro Sto uh, Tri State Pro Stocks, the Valley Four Bangers, all on Saturday, August 29th. Saturday, the 5th of September. That'll be Labor Day weekend. We're going to go racing with the Big Kahuna George Stites Freedom Series race number three. It is a three series race. Memorial weekend, 4th of July weekend, and Labor Day weekend. Uh, book ending and filling the middle of summer. So the Big Kahuna George Stites I want to say thanks to Stites Towing and the Stites family. Uh, we're celebrating the Big Kahuna George Stites in the Freedom Series race number three with the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds and the Hobby Stocks on Saturday, September 12th, the wingless sprint cars will be here, the Delta Dwarf cars, Super Stocks, with the Tri-State Pro Stocks again, and the Valley Four Bangers. And then a Wednesday test and tune on Saturday, or on Wednesday, September 16th, the open practice from 9, or excuse me, 5 to 9 p.m. So, some good racing so far, Joe. Yeah, some good racing. Um, and once again, I'd like to congratulate them on, on the track. I mean... The track just looks stellar. It looks like it has two lanes. It looks like it's going to be really, really racy for the main um, a cushion and inside and even the middle. So I'm looking forward to that. And looks like we're going to have a fast track or some three wide action going on. Three and four wide action has been the story all year long here at Antioch Speedway. So want to uh, say thanks to Chad Chadwick for putting and his whole crew for putting this great uh, track together. Right now, we're going to give you uh, this past episode of Wiley's Race Report. As we take our intermission, we'll be back in just a few minutes with some more racing action. And this is Wiley's Race Report. Hello, race fans. I'm Wiley Wade, and this is Wiley's Race Report for Saturday, August 1st, 2020, on Saturday night. We had the 360-wing sprint cars there, the Delta Dwarf cars, the Super Sox, and the Vintage Hardtops all in action on Saturday night with some great racing that you got to see for the first time on Antioch Speedway TV. That's right. We launched a little earlier than we had originally planned, and that's the big announcement I've been teasing the last couple weeks. But yes, folks, we have got Antioch Speedway TV up and running. You can find it on AntiochSpeedway.tv. That's the place to be for all the racing action, especially until you can get back into the stands at Antioch Speedway. So again, Antioch Speedway TV is up and running on AntiochSpeedway.tv. It was not this past weekend on Speed Sport TV. It will be also on Speed Sport TV as part of that platform. That is the platform we're going to be running on. So that is the place to be is Antioch Speedway TV on AntiochSpeedway.tv. Also this weekend, we launched our brand new Facebook page. That's right. It is a little different now. It's now called Antioch Speedway by Pro Motions. Antioch Speedway by Pro Motions. If you're not subscribed to that new channel or new page on Facebook, head on over and like and follow Antioch Speedway by Promotions. That is now the official Facebook page for Antioch Speedway. That's the place to be for all the news, notes, and information that you're going to need, along with, of course, with mine, Antioch Speedway announcer on both YouTube and Facebook, Antioch Speedway announcer. Back to Saturday night's racing action, the hardtops. Had a field of nine cars there. They had some good racing going on. And out of San Jose, the winner for the main event was Joel Hannigan driving the 16 car. 
Kevin Moralio driving the 40 car, won the Delta Dwarf car main event. Mike Learn out of Petaluma, California, driving the 11H, took home the Super Stock main event. And in our 360 wing sprint car out of Pengrove, California, we had Colby Johnson driving the 38 car, win wire to wire. Great racing action on Saturday night. This upcoming Saturday, it's going to be more great racing action on August 8, 2020. You don't want to miss it again on AntiochSpeedway.tv, AntiochSpeedway.tv for Antioch Speedway TV. We are going to have the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, and the Hobby Stocks all this Saturday at Antioch Speedway. August 8, 2020, IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, and the Hobby Stocks this upcoming weekend at Antioch Speedway. You can see all the action live and direct from Antioch on AntiochSpeedway.tv. On Saturday night, I had the opportunity to have a chat with the driver of the 94 Superstock, Chad Hammer. He's got a great family, he's got a great story, and we didn't even get into everything involved in his story, but uh, you don't want to miss it. Here's what Chad had to say. Here with Chad Hammer, driver of the 94 Super Stock. Chad, uh, welcome to Antioch Speedway for another race. How's it going so far this year for you? It's going really good. Uh, we've, uh, we've had uh, some craziness with this whole COVID thing and when we thought we were going to get started and we actually got started. Uh, but it's been great to get back out here, race with our friends. Uh, we made a lot of changes to the car this year, so that gave us some extra time to do that. Uh, had some engines that we were putting together for some other guys and some other classes. That was those are doing good. Um, but yeah, everything's going great. I'm truly blessed. Truly blessed. So, so you're talking about putting engines together in case people don't know. Chad Hammer Racing Engines is absolutely. what you're talking about. Yes, absolutely. We uh, we've um, been doing a lot of work with uh, the guys out here. Uh, I build engines. We do dyno tuning at my shop. We do a lot of work. I love building engines. Been doing it for quite a while. And, had some really good teachers teach me a lot and I got a lot still to learn but uh, I truly enjoy uh, building engines and I love it when somebody gets an engine from me and they go out whether they're fixing whether I'm fixing a problem that they had whether I'm building something new for them it's just it's a great feeling to see somebody have some success something I was able to contribute to I love that so you like to compete Oh yeah. Let's. Uh, I'm, I'm referring to your previous sport. You want to talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, football was my absolute. That was my lifeblood for years. At, uh, high school. I uh, went to college. DVC. Got a scholarship. Went out and played in Ohio. Uh, after that, uh, I played in several AAA teams. I played uh, for the U.S. national team. Uh, played uh, in some. Uh, uh, the, played against so many teams in, in the World League, um, just every bit of it was football. I've got, uh, I was a three-time All-American, I've uh, got three national championships, uh, I was, I got to play with some great players that are, are in the NFL right now, I've got to play with guys that, you know, that just love the game of football. That was, that was my whole driving, everything I did was uh, all football. What position did you play? I was a defensive tackle, defensive tackle and nose guard. And uh, I, I, uh, I was a 2010 uh, National Defensive Lineman of the Year for uh, Minor League Football News, Triple A Football. So that was a that was a, a, something that was I take a lot of pride in, you know. But uh, absolutely, yeah, love love football, and uh, it uh, always be my passion. But I was lucky enough. I retired in 2013 after our last national championship, and uh, I've been around dirt track racing since I was a kid. Uh, my uncle and my grandfather raced at Petaluma uh, all through the 80s. They had a lot of success. And uh, used to come out here to Antioch with my grandfather and my uncle and watch. And when I had an opportunity to put something together, it was just absolutely. My cousin Jay, Jay Bryant, he got us a couple of cars. We started in the Super Hobbies. And uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's been amazing ever since. It's been an absolute blast. The whole family gets involved. And, uh, yeah. Let's say your whole family gets involved, but you don't even get an off season because in the winter time you're still racing. <laughs> Absolutely, Nathan, my son, uh, he's uh, started competing in outlaw carts. He started when he was four years old, and we got him into an outlaw cart. And uh, he is just. He's been great. It's been so much fun. The whole family has gotten around him, and he's had a lot of success. He runs up the Lake Port. Uh, we've gone to Cycle Land a couple of times, and uh, this year actually we're uh, changing classes. We're moving up. Uh, 
because he had a lot of success last year. He, he uh, actually won all the races except for one, and uh, he always gives me a bad time. <laughs> he always says, Dad, pretty soon you're going to be as good as I am. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it's a blast. We, uh, we we love every bit of it. In fact, we we love getting all the families involved. We one of the things we would like to do out here at the track is try to get um, kids and families, and uh, we, we love it when the fans are here and we get to interact with them. Uh, one of the things we really like to do. My wife, she will go and get Hot Wheels and candy and stuff like that, and we try to give something back to the community because we've been blessed and. When the kids come in over from the pits, we let them sit in the car, and sometimes we even start the car for them. And you just see these kids' faces, they just light up. And the parents, they're not used to somebody, you know, saying, hey, come on over, you know, come check it out. Come. And uh, it's really rewarding. It's, uh, it makes it all worth it. You, know? you definitely have a great family. In fact, you just celebrated your 10th anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Absolutely. I have, I have an amazing wife. And it's funny, I met her through football. And... Uh, but I didn't know how much she loved racing. We went to the drag races one time. We first started dating, and she was hooked. She loved every bit of it. So I was really lucky to uh, to find a, a great woman in her. And, uh, she loves all the racing. She she puts in so much time uh, just taking care of when I'm at the shop working late, whether I'm helping somebody else in their car or their engine or I'm working on my stuff. Um, she's always there. Today, <laughs> funny story. I got up this morning early. We were at the shop working late last night. I got up this morning to go take care of a couple errands. I came back and she was loading the truck up. I mean, she she jumps in with, with, with both feet, and I'm truly blessed to have her by my side. She's a keeper. Oh, absolutely. 100%. She sits down in front of me when we're allowed to have fans over there. She, I see her all the time sitting down in front of me. And, and just want to say thanks for you guys. You, like you had mentioned, you guys are some of the biggest supporters of the stuff that Bob throws out uh, to the kids on, ra on race days when we're able to have fans. So thank you for that. Absolutely. And we didn't start the trend, but we were sure happy to be able to, to, to contribute to it. And there's been people that have done it before we did. I mean, there was a couple times they had bikes and everything else that they were giving out. And it just it feels good to be able to see these kids and, and see the smiles on their faces and see the parents, you know, we really want them to know that, hey, there's a family atmosphere that you can come out here because this place truly is, it's a family racing community. There's anybody in these pits will help each other out with anything. It's, Absolutely. Uh, it's, that's, that's really uh, something that's great to be a part of. All right, Chad Hammer, good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Chad Hammer, driver of the 94. Super stock, Chad Hammer racing in there on the side. Jay's mobile welding and fabrication there as well. And Delta Transmission up on the hood as well. So, Chad, good luck tonight, and uh, talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you, man. That was Chad Hammer, driver of the 94 Superstock here at Antioch Speedway. Folks, if you ever get a chance, go on out, sit in his race car, meet him, shake his hand. Um, when you're allowed back in the grandstands, a lot of the stuff that gets thrown out, they supply. Um, they're just a great family, and they're a lot of fun to be around. So Chad Hammer and his whole family. Good opportunity to have a chat with them. I appreciate the time. With that, I just want to remind you this upcoming Saturday on August 8th, 2020, we're going racing with the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, and the Hobby Stocks. And you can see it all live and direct on Antioch Speedway TV. That's right, AntiochSpeedway.tv is a place to be for all the racing action from Antioch Speedway. That's going to do it for this episode of Wiley's Race Report. Until next time, I'm Wiley Wade. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye, everybody. Three, two. Hello, race fans. I'm Wiley Wade, and this is Wiley's Race Report for Saturday, September. Not September. A little early. Stop shaking. Three. Stop shaking. And like a bobblehead. Three, two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting, fun-filled evening of racing at Antioch Speedway. Intermation is over. It is time for our national anthem. Please stand. Gentlemen, take off your hats. If you're a member of the military or former member of the military, thank you for your service to your 
country. If you're a member of a first responder, thank you for your service to your community. Tonight we're going to bring out the Star Spangled Banner by our very own Deborah Benson from the DNF crew. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh, oh say does that star-spangled Deborah Benson from our DNF crew, the uh, Did Not Finish crew, recorded that, uh, I think, last year or the year before. She did a great job, and thank you very much, Deborah. Look forward to uh, having you back at the racetrack. Currently, she is not able to attend. She is, um, due to COVID-19, not here, but uh, she will be back as well as, as Mike, and we look forward to having them back at the racetrack. All right, so we are done with heat races. We have got the uh, Star Spangled Banner done. It is time to go B-Main racing. And it looks like we're going to have our Hobby Stock, which is our only B-Main for today. Uh, 12 lakh Hobby Stock B-Main feature is going to be coming up. So our starting lineup looks like this. For the Hobby Stock B-Main on the point. Out of Martinez, California. It is going to be the 17 car of Quick Nick DiCarlo. He's going to start on the point outside the front row. The 7 car out of Merced, California is Dustin Donovan. And in the second row in the inside, you're going to have the 46 out of Brentwood, California, Colton Haney. And in your, in the, I'm sorry, on the outside uh, second row, you're going to have the number 03 of uh, Philip Oretta out of Vacaville, California. In row number three, the 29 car out of Brentwood. That's Jake Bettecourt. And outside him, the 100 RY of Maddie, Mc, uh, excuse me, Maddie Clemens out of Oakley. Possibly may drop to the back on that one. I'm not sure if she's going to stay up there or not. And in the fourth row, the inside, you have the 71A of Michaela Taylor. Um, on the outside of her, you have the number eight of uh, George Silva out of Merced, California. Then we drop back to row number five on the inside in the ninth starting spot. The 44G of James Gracely out of Antioch, California. And outside of him, the 14 car. He's been having trouble tonight out of Antioch. It's Logan Fernandez. He did some hot lap, or excuse me, came out and did some hot laps in between the last heat race and the intermission. And not moving very fast. That car is normally faster than that. So we'll see how Logan does. And in your final row, you have the number three of Drew Crowdell out of uh, Antioch, California. And in your number 78, you have Jason Robles out of uh, Rio Vista, California. Joel Crandall in that three car out of Antioch. She's getting a lot of help from people out in the uh, pit area, and she really appreciates it. Re appreciates it, Joel. Miss um, Crandall, young lady, another one of those young guns that we have out here at the racetrack. We're going to do a little bit of packing as well with the uh, Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks as we put a little bit of water down in the turns during intermission you may have seen thanks again for tuning in ladies and gentlemen to Antioch Speedway TV we are 
on AntiochSpeedway.tv. It's the place to be for all the racing action here at Antioch, except for next Wednesday. This upcoming Wednesday, we'll be on Speed Shift TV for the uh, the midweek California tour event here at Antioch. We'll have the IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds, and the Hobby Stocks here. But to other than that, for the rest of the season, you should be right here at Antioch Speedway TV. Um, look for some shows coming out. Uh, Joe doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to task him with doing a, at least some segments or a whole show on himself. We're going to try to get stuff up, and that you'll be able to see on our Facebook pages, which will be on Antioch Speedway by Promotions. That's the new official Antioch Speedway page. Also, you'll be able to tune in to AntiochSpeedway.tv Facebook page. So, not to confuse the AntiochSpeedway.tv website that you're watching this on, but the AntiochSpeedway.tv Facebook page. Yeah. They're going to mirror each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, us collabing and um, doing some segments together. It look, looks to hopefully have some fun times with the drivers and ourselves as well. Joe joining the crew. And thank you very much for joining in. Doing a good job up here. And we are getting ready to go racing for the Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. want to th say thanks to Jay uh, with Jay's Mobile Welding. Um, he is really supporting the Hobby Stock division, sponsoring the division. And most weeks he has some, sign of, some kind of prize. He's given away 100 bucks cash. He's given away tires. Um, and this goes to not one of the first five cars. This goes to someone finishing sixth to the end of the field. So. Yeah, down the line. So it pays better a little bit for the... For some of the finishers back there, and gives them a little appreciation, you know, bring them to the racetrack. These are not the high dollar, high payout classes. So, we are getting set for racing action here at Antioch Speedway for another night. And do want to say thanks again for you tuning in. We look forward to having you back each and every week. And cannot, cannot, I can't stress enough how much we can't wait for you to be back in person in the stands here at Antioch Speedway. But again, that's okay. You come out here with Antioch Speedway. You bring your smartphone. You'll be able to watch. Um, as we build up our program here, we are going to end up with the capabilities of doing replays and stuff. Um, that is still, we're, we're just, we're in the baby phase and getting set. So uh, that will be coming up and look forward to having you here and on AntiochSpeedway.tv, but also looking forward to having you here in front of us, in the stands, in person. Can't wait. Yeah, of course. Um and just for the people watching, we really do miss our fans. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like they said, the fans is what makes the dirt track um, continue to to come back all the years. And the drivers really do appreciate it when you guys are out there cheering for them and holding up your signs. And uh, you know, in the pits, coming back to see them after the races. And when you do uh, are finally allowed to come back out, you do get to go out to the pits at the end of the night and meet and greet and sit in race cars and all kinds of fun. So. Um, waiting on Logan Fernandez as we finish up a couple more packing laps. 12 laps for this uh, Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stock B Main. That means eight drivers out of the 12 starting this, uh, or 11 actually starting right now, um, are going to transfer to the main event. So you want to be in the top eight to go through to the main event. Yeah, of course. And also, like you said, with the, uh, the water being laid down on the track, you see it's still a little wet spot over there in uh, turn one. The track is going to be a lot faster, a lot more, I believe, um, a lot more racy, possibly. Uh, we'll see how these hobby stocks adjust to this. Because before, like you said, when they came out on the track, the track was pretty kind of starting to get dry. They laid some water down, got it wet. So um, let's see how they change it for the drivers and the top eight who can make it into the feature. All right, the uh, one to go signal being given at the starter stand. And to let you know, if you want to buy a hobby stock, that number 17 on the point, that one is for sale at the moment. Um, also want to say thanks uh, if you're tuning in. It is also on IMCA TV. So do appreciate that with the IMCA classes. They'll be on over there. So green flag coming out next time by. Quick Nick DiCarlo stepping down from his normal IMCA modified. He's saving that car for the uh, Speed Week and brought out this cool hobby stock that he has for sale. And... If, if if Nick DiCarlo built it, it's going to be a fast race car. Oh, yeah. That car actually does look pretty slick. I love the all-white cars with the with the orange numbers. But the green flag is going to drop. And, oh, it looks like Nick DiCarlo had the lead for just a slim second. But it looks like, oh, he's going to slide uh, slide up across the racetrack. But it's holding on the lead. Nevertheless, Maddie Clemens uh, looks like she kind of 
lost it there in the slick. Like I said, the track is still wet. Battle for the lead down coming up off turn number four. Kimo, or, or excuse me, Philip Aretta. Coming off turn number four down the front stretch. Passing quick Nick DiCarlo down on the low side of turns three and four. That low side down in the south end of the racetrack. Right now is slick. The car is pushing up, so they're having to run a little bit higher. Smoke coming out of Matty Kleiman's car. But Philip Arena, I interviewed him. You can see his interview coming up on this week's Wiley's Race Report. Young man, 15 years old. Um, Actually, I think he's 16 years old, soon to be 17 years old, driving that 03 car. That's a five-time championship car with his dad, the Flying Hawaiian Kimo Aretta. Oh, yeah, the legendary Kimo Aretta. But it looks like he's holding on to the lead um, over Nick DiCarlo, George Silva in second. and Silva in third. Then we got uh, Jason Robles in the fourth spot. Fifth is the 46 car, uh, Colton Haney. Sixth uh, is a 29, Jake... Benacourt, seventh, is a seven car of Dustin Donovan, and our eighth and final transfer car is a 44G of Jason Gracely. And quick, Nick, you can tell he's really, really driving that car. He's kind of pushing, sliding, but like you said, the track is still wet. Philip Aretta still holding on to the lead. George Silva sitting back there in third, waiting for maybe a possible somebody to make a mistake, or if he can gain up and grab the position from quick Nick DiCarlo. Philip Aretta in that 03 car. He has a checkered flag earlier this year. Is the one and only checkered flag driving a race car. It was in the B Main event um, about a month or so ago. So Aretta, once again, running strong in his B Main. But look at this. He's got two cars up in front of him. He's going to have to work around. One is Matty Clemens. The other one is Jewel Crandall. He goes to the high side. Crandall cuts up. Aretta has to cut low. The blue and yellow flag comes out for those slower cars. Here comes Quick Nick driving around the high side. He gets together with Jewel Crandall. Crandall. Spins down to the inside. Now they got the 100 RY of Maddie Clemens to get around. Quick Nick gets underneath. Aretta coming up off turn number four. He was down almost to the tires on the inside. And it looks like it's going to be a battle as Quick Nick slides in there. But Philip Aretta's going to still hold it off for him. Quick Nick bound it down the back stretch, stalking him, stalking that rear bumper of uh, Aretta as Aretta slides. Coming down the front stretch, and it looks like uh, still going to be one-two across the across the front stretch line. Both these cars have passengers in them. I know the 03 car has the younger uh, Kimo Aretta Jr. in the passenger seat in that 03 car. He can't wait. That car is going to be his at some point. But here comes Quick Nick DiCarlo. He works around after using the 71A of. Michaela Taylor as a pick. He gets around Philip Aretta. Aretta made a mistake following into turn number three behind the 71A. That cost him the lead as Quick Nick gets around him and now starting to pull away. Yes, yeah, so as Quick Nick gets around, he makes a slide job coming out of turn three. Possibly just going to try to cruise and run away with this one. Two laps remain. We got the quick Nick DiCarlo on the point. Philip Aretta in the second spot. Third, George Silva. Fourth is going to be Jake Benacourt. Fifth, Jason Robles. Sixth is going to be the uh, Colton Haney car. Seventh will be Grace Lee. Eighth is going to be uh, a lapped car. White flag out. One more time around. Yeah, one more time around. It looks like the 03 still going to try to give them a battle, even though they're both locked into the show. But... Uh you still want that number one spot as Quick Nick's going to round turn three. Coming out of turn four, and Quick Nick DiCarlo is going to take the B feature. Quick, uh, Quick Nick DiCarlo with the win. Philip Aretta second. George Silva is going to get the third spot. Fourth is going to be Jake Benacourt in that 29 car. Fifth is going to be Jason Robles crossing the line with a flat right, run, right front tire in the fifth spot. Sixth will be uh, Colton Haney. Seventh, Grace Lee. Those two might have been sw uh, swapped. We'll have to wait and see from timing and scoring on that officially. But we do know that Quick Nick DiCarlo takes home the win in that 17 car. So, our B main is under er, finished. We know who's going main event racing. Yes, and that's going to complete our B main. So, Wiley, you know what that means. It's feature time. Time to go main event racing. Looks like we're going to have a lot of fun waiting to hear. Did I, uh, just listening, I'm waiting here. I think these cars may have to go back, throw fuel in real quick, and get right back to the starting line. Or do we have another one coming up first? Ooh, hearing a... Uh,
There may be something interesting coming up here, but right now we're going to go four banger racing. This is a division that we have brought back this year. We're really working on uh, getting this built up if you're interested in going racing and never done it before. Um, we are going to uh, have a little fun with these guys. We're going to get them on the front straight away. So our starting lineup for the four banger division. Again, uh, as I was saying, if you are interested, this is a great division. Uh, we're trying to get enough cars out here. But Trevor Jolly starting on the point, the 722 out of Modesto. He's driving a 2000 Chevy Cavalier. On the outside will be Jess Palladino out of Brentwood, California, driving a 2000 Honda Prelude. And we're going to stop on the front straight away. Joe, we're going to turn these folks around and we're going to go clockwise. With wait, these guys. Wait, can you say that one more time? We're going clockwise racing here at Antioch Speedway with the four bakers. Something different that we've never seen. Um, it's been a number of years since uh, Rich did this, and uh, this because we haven't had the four bangers in a number of years, and this is something he does with the uh, four bangers every once in a while and tonight he's been threatening to do it the last couple times and tonight he's doing it so yeah and you can only think about what the drivers possibly might be thinking in the head like wait what, are we really going to be racing backwards on the track so i have to get the uh got to get just on the outside because it is different this way all right so we're going to go racing and that's our starting lineup Four bangers going backwards here at antioch speedway thanks for tuning in to antioch speedway tv or you won't find this anywhere else. Four bangers going backwards. Uh, personally, to tell you, I think this is my first time ever really seeing this. Uh, <laughs> a race going um, backwards like this. Um, besides the figure eights at Chot Chill, I remember I used to go to those. But uh, four bangers going backwards on the high bank three eights oval. Let's see how that's going to turn out for them. Here they go down to turn number, what is going to be turn number three under this configuration. And coming up off turn number four. Green flag in the air. And all right, green flag in the air. And then, they, like you said, they're going into turn one, which would be turn four. And it looks like the 722 uh, trolley um, is going to take the lead with the, oh, looks like she's going to slow up. They're going to be side by side. But it's going to be trolley leading the first lap of the main event. Trevor Jolly in that 722. Jolly down to turn number one in this configuration, working the low line. Jess Palladino on the high side, coming up off turn number two, down the back straight away. Yes, folks, we are calling this backwards. Actually, the race is backwards. We're calling it forwards. Trevor Jolly in the 722 2000 Chevy Cavalier up off turn number four at the line. Down the front straight away into turn number one. Oh, and Palladino's going to give him a little push to let him know that he is there. Looks like Jolly's still going to kind of mobile out of it, coming into turn three, once again, like I said. Coming out of turn four, Jolly's going to hold on to it. One reason you can do that with the four bangers is technically by the rules, they're not supposed to change anything. They're not supposed to move any weight around. Um, some of the weight they add may be on the wrong side, but uh, generally as far as the tires and stuff, everything's supposed to be stock. So going this way should not really affect them all that much. And so far, they actually are looking faster going this way around than they have the other way through the rest of the season. Chris Gorder not here tonight, unfortunately. Winner, first couple races of the year. Yeah, and as you can see, as Jolly comes out, uh, coming out of turn four, you can see how the car really leans on that uh, left front. Makes the car kind of push out a little bit, but um, he's still holding on to the lead with um, the number 23 of Paladino. Uh, Paladino's going to give him a run for his money in the inside, and Jolly's still going to hold on to the lead. Jess Paladino in that 23 car came out to practice a couple of weeks ago when we had a Wednesday night practice and lost multiple front tires on the right side. So this is actually helping if they had a problem on the right front. Um, putting all the weight and stuff on the uh, left front for this main event. Jess Paladino down on the inside. He drives it through turn number two or four hard. Coming up off turn number four, getting slideways. And still at the line, it is a 722 of Trevor Jolly. But they're still touching and bumping and banging down into turn number one. Oh, yeah. They're really leaning on each other right now, trying to get that win. Two cars on the track, wouldn't you think, couldn't make more of an interesting, uh, exciting race right now. Looks like Jolly's still going to hold on to the lead. But Paul Adino is Paul Adino's stalking. He wants his win. You can tell. He wants it badly. These cars having a lot of fun. They look like they're having fun the way they're driving right now. Uh, but Palladino on working a, lay, a, a car with hire, going through turns one and two on that end of the racetrack, going down the back straightaway in turn 
number three for this backwards track coming up off turn number four. 722 at the line with the lead. That is Trevor Jolly. Oh, yeah, Trevor Jolly. It looks like he has his lines. He knows where he wants to run, where he can hold off um, Paula Dino. And um, now they're coming down the back stretch. Paula Dino's still stalking, still stalking. Looks like he's trying to figure out. Like they say, the second place car always has, I would say, the better line to watch the first place car where he's going to go. But it looks like Jolly keeping it low to the track. Jolly Paladino. Get Jolly getting into turn number one, got a little bit squirrely. That opened up the inside line. Paladino looks at the inside. Last time by 61.813 miles an hour. That's actually a little slower. They were running about 63 miles an hour around this racetrack. That's that's running right up there where they normally run, so the speeds are not down. That is for sure going the wrong way around. Two laps to go. All right, two laps to go. And can Jolly just hold off Paladino just for two more laps? It looks like Paladino kind of slips up a little bit. But he gains in the backstretch, it looks like, and kind of gains coming off of a three and four. Possibly not this time. It looks like Jolly's going to get that white flag. One more time around for your four bangers. Let's see how this one goes. Down to turn number one. One final time into the 722 of Trevor Jolly. Here comes Jess Palladino down on the inside. Up off turn number two. Down the back straightaway. They're keeping things low. They're not sliding out to the uh, wall on the outside of the racetrack. Down to turn number three going backwards. Paladino dives in deep, but coming up off turn number four, checkered flag in the air. Trevor Jolly is going to take the win, and uh, that's going to be Paladino. Just Paladino is going to take second position. That's going to do it for the main event for the four bangers. Congratulations to Trevor Jolly. Down to victory lane as Trevor Jolly's going to climb out of the race car. Come on out, Trevor. Out. Yep, go ahead and jump on out, getting his gloves off. As he climbs out, a 2000 Chevy Cavalier. Get his neck restraint off, get his helmet off. 20 lap, or That's quite a bit different. Congratulations, taking on the win, going backwards. Yeah, thank you very much. How was that? It was a last minute, uh, you didn't know anything about it, suddenly you come out and uh, you're told you're going the other way around. What'd you think? Um, you know, the way the car set up, set up to go left, and I'm a straight line driver, so to turn right was completely different. Come on over here real quick. Uh, we got a pole on our way up there. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, you guys actually ran really well for going the other way around and not being prepared for it. What was it like as far as the handling of the car? Um, it just to totally different. I mean, I, I was a little, little scared with the way, um, with the way you know the way the car is set up. It's set up to go the other way, so I didn't know what to expect at all. So you had a good battle with Jess Palladino, um, yeah. back and forth. What was the hard part? How'd you get the win finally? Um, I think it just just, just powered through it, uh, you know. 2000 Chevy Cavalier taking it to victory lane. Yes, sir. All right, congratulations. First win, too. First win? First congratulations. Win. Yep, yep, yep. So, I mean, it's only against two people, but, you know, I'll take a, I'll a take win. A win is a win, right? Yep. All right, congratulations, Trevor Jolly, for much. taking home the main event for the uh, – Four bangers, kind of on over here to Jess Palladino. Getting out of the 23. Winner last time out. Finished second here tonight, getting the steering wheel off. Jess, you gave it a heck of a shot, man. You were battling in there and in and out and pushing in. And yeah, it's a little hard to go the other way. 
it's, I can barely go left, let alone right. I was say, well, what did you think of that when Rich came down and said, hey, guys, you're going to go the other way around? I mean, I was like, all right. And then we kind of looked at each other, and I was like, uh-oh. Like, it's a little tough, but what was, nice challenge. What was the hard part going that way? Kind of just in the car different, so you're, you're just, it's just off. I don't know how to explain it. It's just different. You get, you get your, going the other way around, you get your marks, you know where you're braking, you know where you're getting on the gas, and suddenly it's backward. Well, I'll tell you what, calling it, you know, that's turn one and two when you're going it that way. That was weird. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different. All right, so who helps you get out here each and every week? I got my grandpa, my mom, my aunt and uncle, my brother, my friends, just family and, you know, just people trying to help. I say you've been watching you all season long. You have progressed, just watched you steadily progress. You're running well. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Jess Palladino finishing second tonight's four-banger division. With that, we're getting ready for the Hobby Stock main event. That's coming up next. All right, starting lineup for the uh, Hobby Stocks. Go ahead and kick it off, Joe. Uh, and the number 18T needs no introduction. It's going to be uh, James Thompson. And to his outside, it's going to be the number 38 of Ryan Hart. Inside row number two, the 22D. That's Travis Dutcher, winner earlier this year and also winner of heat race number three. The 24M, winner of heat race number four, starts in the fourth spot. And in the number 20, you're going to have um, Josh Leach. And in the number 69, you're going to have Robert uh, Neven. Robert Neven in that 69, the 27 car on the inside of row four. That is Craig Tatum out of Merced, California. This 27Z on his outside, Nicholas Zapatero out of Antioch, California. And in the inside, uh, she needs no introduction. It's going to be the squirrel, the number 97 of Bree Truen. And in the number um, 47, you're going to have um, Gavin Griffiths. In the sixth row on the inside out of Oakley, California, the 45 car. That's Gene Haney and his outside, the 225. Brand new number for him out of Oakley, California, Aiden Ponciano. And in the seventh row in the inside, you're going to have uh, the number 17. Just one is a B feature. It's going to be a quick Nick DiCarlo. And to his outside, it's going to be the 03 of Philip Oretta. In row number eight on the inside, the eight car out of Merced, California. That's George Silva to his outside, the 29 car of Jake Benicourt out of Brentwood. And in the ninth row, you have the number 78. Um, that one's going to be uh, Josh Robles. And in the number 46, you're going to have uh, Colton Haney. And on our 10th and final row, the 44 car. That is the car of James Gracely out of Antioch, California. And the 71A of Michaela Taylor also in there had a car scratch so that is going to put the 100 ry into the field that is um maddie climens will be joining the field I, i'm sure the uh, one that scratched was uh the guy that blew up there i'm just drawing a blank at the moment so climens michaela taylor all right, with that, we're getting ready to go green flag racing. 20 lap main event for the uh, Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stocks. Once again, I want to say thanks to Jay for sponsoring the Hobby Stock Division here at Antioch Speedway. And thank you for tuning in. Thanks for the DNF crew. Thanks for the officials. And thanks for all the crews and drivers and teams out in the pit area. Um, during this COVID-19 mess, it is nice to be able to race I know a lot of things can't happen because of it, but we are here. We're at the racetrack, 
and wish you were here, but at least you can be on Antioch Speedway TV. Oh, yeah, nothing better than being here with your uh, friends, and I consider them my family um, here every Saturday night here at the uh, Speedway. And love to have the opportunity to be here in the booth with you, Wiley Wade, announcing. Thank you very much, Joe, for uh, coming out. It's going to be a great night of racing yet to come. Just checking my messages. Again, don't forget, we got two Facebook pages for you to watch. Three Facebook pages. First, mine, Antioch Speedway Announcer. i got to plug my own. That's also on YouTube, Antioch Speedway Announcer. Uh, but we also have the, the new official Antioch Speedway Facebook page. That is Antioch Speedway by Promotions. Antioch Speedway by Promotions. And then we just launched today AntiochSpeedway.tv Facebook page. That goes along with AntiochSpeedway.tv website. So don't confuse them. They are two different things. AntiochSpeedway.tv on the website. That is where you watch it. AntiochSpeedway.tv Facebook goes in conjunction with Antioch Speedway by Promotions Facebook. Did I make that clear as mud? Oh, there's so much you got to <laughs> take in, but our fans will get used to it. We have something good coming up for the season for them. Uh, yep. Looks like the green flag is going to drop here, and green flag on the Hobstock main event. Going down the front straightaway, Ryan Hart on that high side had a great run down into turn number one. Thompson having a little bit of trouble, gets a little bump from behind by Travis Dutra. Robert Niven almost into the fence off turn number two. Aiden Ponciano off, almost into the fence off turn number two. Everyone gets two turns, one and two unscathed, but at the line, it is Ryan Hart with the lead. And it's going to be Ryan Hart leading the first lap. Uh, Thomas in second, and uh, no, Thomas is going to slip back to third. Dietrich's on the high side. They're drag racing down the backfield coming into turn three. And it's going to be Ryan Hart still in the lead. Ryan Hart, Larry McKenzie, Travis Dutcher, Dane Thompson, Josh Leach, the squirrel Bree Trowan, Gene Haney, um, Nicholas Zapatero, Nick DiCarlo, Robert Niven, George Silva, uh, the 47, Gavin Griffiths, Jason Robles, Jake Benicourt, Philip Peretta, Aiden Ponciano. Ma uh, da -da -da. Maddie Clements is next, uh, Griffiths, and then the 71A, Michaela Taylor, and the 46 car at the back of the pack, Gavin Griffiths, or excuse me, Colton Haney. Oh, yeah, and look uh, look at Dietrich. Like you said, I think Dietrich wants, wants to get back to his winning ways here, and he is in the inside of Ryan Hart right now. Going to try to put a move on him and coming out of turn one. Yes, and he puts a move on him. Coming out of three, and it looks like he's going to seal the lead coming down the back stretch, going into turn three. Travis uh, Dutra on the point after he gets around the Ryan Hart car coming up off turn number two. And they got the slower car of Michaela Taylor out in front of him. She gets up out of the way. One car getting slideways off turn number two. That is the 44G of James Gracely. Larry McKenzie has problems. He goes slow. He had to get on a break uh, because of a slower car in front of him. But our leader up in front, he's got Colton Haney in front of him coming up next. Dietrich's going to hold that lead. Oh, he's going to slide up. And they're all bunched. All the top four guys are under a blanket right now. Dietrich's going to take the outside. Looks like James Thompson's going to slide in the in inside. Travis Dutra up off turn number four at the line with the lead. James Thompson in the second spot. Ryan... Uh, uh, Hart in the third spot, Josh Leach and Breach throwing around out your top five. Thompson gets all kinds of slideways trying to get around that 100 car. He does so, does not lose a spot, but this time Kalamans has a little bit of help going around as a faster car is trying to get around him. Josh Leach, I think, gave her a little bit of hello, I'm here, get out of my way, tap. And we stay under the green flag. Down the back straightaway into turn number three. Travis Dutra with the lead. Oh, it's so much action going on on the track. But Travis, oh, we have somebody, George Silva. George Silva, turn four. It looks like he may have, have a flat left rear. George Silva. And yeah, that's going to bring out the caution. Bringing out the yellow flag. The one thing he's got to remember is he may have brought out the yellow flag. He does not get the two laps. If you... Uh, have a flat tire, but you don't bring out the yellow, you do get two laps. But if you bring out the yellow, you don't get the two laps. So George Silva has got to get back there um, and get back out so he does not get the two laps. That last lap is 17.78. Second lap, 75.928 miles an hour for our leader, Travis Dutra, who's running with his third engine in the last three races as he keeps blowing up. Yeah, third engine. It looks like he was able to take the lead on, I believe it was lap three and... Man, the top four guys, Dietrich and Thompson and Hart, all have just been a close battle with lap traffic kind of playing in, playing in uh, Dutra, Travis Dutra's favor. But 
all been pretty close battles so far. Travis Dutra is your leader. James Thompson in the second spot. Third place is Ryan Hart. Fourth place, Josh Leach. Fifth place, the Squirrel Breed And Then we have Larry McKenzie in the sixth spot. Seventh, waiting to hear. Um, we got Gene Haney and Nicholas Zapatero side by side. I'm not sure who's in that. Then comes Nick DiCarlo, James Gracely, Robert Niven, uh, Gavin Griffiths, the Maddie Clemens car, Jake Benecourt, Matt... Uh, Michaela Taylor, then we have Aiden Ponciano, Jason Robles, uh, Philip Aretta, and the 46 car of uh, Colton Haney at the back of the pack. I'm really surprised Jason Robles usually are running up front for the win, but now that I look, I need to find out. It might not be Jason at the wheel because I see yellow flags sticking out the back of that race car. All right, and it looks like they're going to Texas-style restart them here with Travis Dutro up front and uh, James Thompson choosing his uh, choosing his line. He looks like he's going to take the inside. Lights out. They're getting ready to go green down the back stretch. Okay, so that is not Jason Robles in the uh, 78 car because Jason Robles is standing down in the infield, so I'm not her sure who's running that car. That would explain a lot. Green flag in the air, Tra uh, Travis Dutra up off turn number two. The squirrel, Bree Trowan, having trouble off turn number two. She loses a couple spots. Nick DiCarlo down on the inside. They touch wheels coming down the back straightaway. Dutra at the line. Ten down, ten to go. Travis Dutra is still going to hold on to the lead, and it looks like he's kind of pulling away a little bit. Looks like he has a nice slim margin lead over uh, James Thompson. Uh, Josh Leeds and Ryan Hart doing battle for, it looks like, I want to say the third position. As the leaders get down into turn number one, we continue following them. Coming up off turn number two, Thompson. Now about five or six car lengths back, another seven or eight car lengths back to the 38 of Ryan Hart. That battle right there, the third place battle between Ryan Hart and the 20 car of Josh Leach. Coming up off turn number four, down the front straightaway into turn number one. Leach down on the inside, Hart on the outside. And now, here comes quick Nick DiCarlo, our B main feature. Looks like he's going to try to go inside of Ryan Hart for that uh, fourth, pl fourth place position. Travis Dietrich still have us. Oh! DiCarlo with a problem. He pulls to the infield. Smoke coming out of the back of that race car. So problems for quick Nick DiCarlo in that 17 hobby stock. Up off turn number four at the line, Travis Dutra. Eight laps remain up on the scoreboard. We got Travis Dutra, James Thompson in the first and second. Josh Leach got to drive the car this week um, in the 20 car. He's in the third spot. Ryan Hart fourth and fifth. We got about, or uh, that's Larry McKenzie, I'm sorry, in the fifth spot. Now Travis Dutra is going to run into a little bit of traffic. He's on the rear bumper of uh, the 100 RX, uh, or I'm sorry, the 100 RY of uh, Madison Clemens. Down into turn just number three. trying to three. get the traffic right now. But it looks like Travis Dutron has that car on rails tonight. Getting that, back to his winning ways here at uh, Antioch Speedway. Travis Dutra has not skipped a beat moving up from the Dwarf cars. He's still running the Dwarf cars. He ended up, uh, after he blew the first motor, bought another Dwarf car. And so he's doing both the Dwarf cars and the Hobby Stocks. And he is on a rail, as you said. He's got a huge lead. Um, Three quarters of a straightaway lead over James Thompson in that 18T. Here comes Josh Leach, and the 46 car comes next. I don't think he's up there, though. He's just following Josh Leach at the moment. Oh, and Travis Dutrin is just sending it. Getting around this track quick. And he's just pulling away. Uh, looks like he just has a dominant car tonight. Pulling away from uh, James Thompson and uh, Josh Leach. Uh, Travis Dutra, one of the cars thinking about moving up to the IMCA stock cars. We got two laps to remain. But the IMCA stock cars coming to Antioch Speedway next year. We've already got stock cars in the area. Um, some drivers have driven all the way out to Iowa to buy some. Uh, some I saw Chris Sorensen just bought an IMCA stock car, so the IMCA stock cars coming to Antioch Speedway. White flag out. Travis Dutra one more time around. Yeah, Travis Dutra uh, coming around down the back stretch. And it looks like he's going to take this feature going into turn three. And oh, and he's going to near. Uh, Travis Dutra is going to take the checker flag. We got, we got a crash over in turn number two. We got 
two cars sitting sideways over in turn number two, but two, Travis Tucher with the win. James Thompson in the second spot. Josh Leach finishes third. Fourth is going to be the 38. Of, uh, that's Ryan Ryan Hart, and fifth will be the 17. No, it won't be the 17. It'll be uh, the 24 car. Uh, Larry McKenzie rounded out your top five. Last lap of 17.73, second lap 76.142 miles an hour. That's going to do it for our Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stock. So I'm going to head down for Victory Lane. That's going to round out our top five for the uh, Hobby Stock feature. Once again, you can catch all the action live on the Antioch Speedway TV page and um, sign in and get used to the using the Antioch Speedway TV. Uh, have all of our races covered on, on Antioch Speedway. Wiley Way is going to go down and interview the top three possibly. Heading down here to Victory Lane, waiting for Travis Tucher to work his way around. What a race. 17 car. Got some fluid sitting here, unfortunately. He's uh, came in. Travis Tucher pulling up. Already has his helmet off. Steering wheel off. Got his, uh, getting his ears out. And getting ready to climb on out. There he is, Travis Dutra. Well, the last two times out, you decided to grenade some motors. This time, you did it the right way and took home the win. Congratulations. Thank you. We went from uh, no luck to a little bit of luck. I just want to thank uh, Anthony and Misty Wellborn. Got me this motor in here. Got us a win tonight. I appreciate that. So... I don't know if you know it or not, but you had no pressure at all during most of that. Uh, James Thompson, who finished second, was three quarters of a straightaway behind there at the end. Um, even through all that lap traffic, how did that go? Uh, lap traffic was great. This track was awesome tonight. I want to thank Chad for putting on this track. Smooth, hooked up. We couldn't ask for a better track. So who do you want to thank for getting you out here each and every week? Who do you want to thank on your race car for getting you out here each and every week? Uh, I want to thank uh, DRP. Nick DiCarlo does a lot of work for me, helps me out, lets me use his lift. We change motors down there, any everyday ma uh, maintenance. CPT, I want to say hi to my son Dylan, Danielle. Uh, it's been a good night. Travis Dutcher, winner of the uh, Jay's Mobile Welding Hobby Stock Main Event here tonight at Antioch Speedway. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, there's another one coming up. We got the IMCA Sport Modifieds coming up next. Don't go away. Oh, I was just holding my ear. The dirt modifieds are coming up now. Giants. I'm doing it in a different order than normal. So the IMCA dirt is coming out next. All right, on track we have the, uh, the A mods. Uh, they're going to have the A mod feature before the sport mods this time. And in your, fr or your front row, you have the B4 of uh, Bobby Montavo. It looks like he might possibly uh, go to the back of the field. And in your O3, you have uh, Kimo Oretta. Row number two looks like this on the inside. 2019 defending champion out of Antioch. It is Buddy Nist outside the front row. The 097, Sean DeForest out of Livermore, California. And in row three, you have your West Coast Nationals champion, uh, 83, uh, Kellen Chadwick. And outside of him, you have the 44S of uh, Shane DeVolder. 
in row number four, the 49 car. That is our points leader. Winner last two races out. Winner of heat race number one. And out of Oakley, California, Tricky Troy Folger outside the front row. In the A starting spot, it is out of Morgan Hill, Anthony Giuliani in the 15G. And in your fifth row, you have the number 17. Uh, looks like he's not on the track right now, but you have your number 17 of uh, Terry DiCarlo. And then outside of him, you have a 61 of uh, Ricky Thrasher. And then in our 12th and final starting row, it is a 68M on the inside. That is John McDougall out of Antioch, California. And the sixth car of Jim Pettit is in the back of the pack. Now with that, that's what it is on paper. Then drivers start moving themselves around. Um, Bobby Montalvo, who has only about a quarter of the uh, body panels on that race car, nothing on the right side, um, above the wheels, or excuse me, below the wheels, is has fallen to the back of the pack from the original pole position. So that moves the inside line up. That puts Buddy Niss on the point. And looks like, as you said, Terry DiCarlo is not out there as well in the 17 car. So those two cars are not in the field at the moment. Should be getting ready to go green flag racing here in just a minute. Gonna give him the one to go signal. Uh, looks like you have Terry DiCarlo. Looks like he's entering the track right now. Terry DiCarlo is gonna go catch up to the field. So being he was late, he will have to fall to the back of the pack. Gonna give him the one to go signal at the starter stand. Again, a lower, nor lower than normal car count tonight uh, due to the upcoming California Speed Week starting in two days. So a lot of the te uh, teams did not want to come out and take the chance of damaging their cars prior to a six-day, six-race, six-race track event. Um, so a little lower than normal. But next on Wednesday night, we should have a full field of cars here, that's for sure as we have them coming around rounding turn four looks like they're going to get on the loud powder it's going to be green flag kimo Reda gets out there around on the high side and it looks like he's gonna grab the lead down the back stretch away from chester niss sean deforest wants to get racy on the outside oh but look at kellen chadwick coming in the inside but oh kimo Reda, i think is going to lead the first lap uh, going down the front straightaway to turn number one, it was Kimo Arreta by about six inches over Buddy Niss in that 28K. Here comes Kelly Chadwick, Shane DeForest, or excuse me, Shane DeVolder. <laughs> I was looking at DeForest and said Shane, so Shane DeVolder in that 44S. He's held back in the uh, heat race. He's definitely not holding back now, right now on the inside, uh, on the outside of Tricky Troy Folger, but the battle for second. You got Kelly Chadwick on the low side. Buddy Niss on the high side, give it to Chadwick. Kellen Chadwick is not messing around. He is moving up to the front. Getting a run off of turn two, coming on Kimo Aretta. And he dives down to the inside. Maybe scares him a little bit, but he pushes up. Kellen Chadwick's going to take the lead. New leader at the line, Kellen Chadwick in the 83 car. You can never count him out. He's always one to beat here at Antioch Speedway. Kimo Aretta, the flying Hawaiian in the second spot. But look who's at there in the third spot. Time into the inside of Aretta. It's Tricky Troy Folger in that 49 car. Point leader, two time, or the winner the last two times out. Folger oh, up yeah. to second. It's about to get good. Here comes Tricky Troy. He's going to run down Kellen Chadwick. Trying to make it possibly a three-peat this time, but Kellen Chadwick is digging coming out of turn four. He's going to hold on to the lead. Chicken Troy behind him. Chester Niss in third place. And Shane DeVolder in fourth. Some of the fastest speeds we've seen all year. That last lap of 15 and a half second lap. 87.097 miles an hour for the dirt modifieds here at Antioch Speedway. Three-eighths mile high banked oval. Kellen Chadwick still in the lead, but Tricky Troy is reeling him in. Tricky Troy wants to prove why he is a four-time track champion here at this track. He's gaining little by little. Oh, and he kind of makes a little push coming out of turn four. Kellen Chadwick holds on to the lead. Tricky Troy still digging, giving it everything that car has. Bolger made a mistake down at turn number three that uh, last time through and got out of the gas and lost about four car lengths. Jim Pettit smoking, coming up off turn number two. Kellen Chadwick still leading. Looks like they're running the same line a little bit. The track you can tell still has a lot of uh, a lot of moisture in it. Chadwick kind of get a little redded up. 
Chadwick up off turn number four at the line. He's out of 15.34, 88.005 miles an hour, and he is getting reeled in. Folger ever so slowly get, catching him down into the turn in the one and two end of things. He seems to be a little bit better, struggling just a little bit more in three and four, and loses a little bit of ground that time by. Oh, Kellen Chadwick. And they're still just running one, two. Nothing to gain and nothing to lose for Tricky Troy. Trying to make it a three P possibly. Kellen. But Kellen Chadwick has a beautiful line coming out of three and four. Chadwick coming down. He's got a slower car out in front of him. This car may play a part in what happens here. Terry Carlo in that 17 car right in front of the leader now and coming here they through go, three and four. Traffic. Can this possibly allow Tricky Troy to make a move on Kellen Chadwick? As all three of them are running the same line, even lap traffic in front of them. Chadwick down into turn number three. He gets underneath Terry DiCarlo. DiCarlo now knows they're there. Troy Folger slides high in three and four, gets right in behind Terry DiCarlo, but he gets around him. Now it's nose to tail, one and two down the ba uh, back straightaway. 28K of Chester Ness pulled into the infield. It looks like we're going to have a yellow possibly with the 68M of uh, John Madugo going around in the middle of turn three and four. Don't know if Buddy Niss in that 28 car and the 68 of John McDougall got together or if they were separate incidents, but Buddy Niss in the 28K pulls into the infield now, pulling off the racetrack. John McDougall not, not moving over there at the bottom lane of turn number three. The last lap, a little slower as they were working around the, the uh, 17 car, 1569 on the stopwatch, 86.042 miles an hour. That... Uh, that may be slower than it had been, but that's still a fast racetrack. This is a fast racetrack here tonight. Oh, yeah, very fast racetrack. And now with it bunching up the field, and uh, I'm sorry, with Tricky Troy getting a little bit closer, um, it looks like they're going to do battle here uh, with the last uh, few 10 laps to go. So what's Troy going to do? Is he going to take the high side or go to the low side? Because he is the second spot. He gets to choose, and he's got Shane DeVolder in third spot. Man, if you know Troy, uh, Troy really likes to search, and he can really drive that car. Uh, I would like it's going to be an interesting race, and he's going to search high, low, middle. It doesn't matter. He's going to whatever he can to get the three P. He's going to try to get it done. So it looks like he takes the high side, puts Shane Devolder down on the low side. Um, Kellen Chadwick, of course. Now the leader has a row to himself, but he still has to choose whether he wants to be high or low because. Guess what, folks? If you take the low side, the guy on the high side gets to try to make a move on you. If you take the high side, the guy on the low side tries to make a move on you. And we have found multiple times where that makes a huge difference, and we've seen passes for the lead. But uh, Chadwick starts high. Oh, and Kellen, Kellen gets a jump, but here comes Tricky Ford. Tricky Troy. Tricky Troy down the back stretch. He had that left front up all the way the whole time, and he's going to get the inside, but not going to get it done. Kellen Chadwick still leaves the race. Chadwick down into turn number one. He's got Tricky Troy on his rear bumper. Shane DeVolder has reeled him in. There's Jim Pettit. Where did he come from? Suddenly Pettit up into the fourth spot. Put the Kimo right back into the fifth spot. Sixth, Anthony Giuliani. Seventh, John McDougall. Eighth is the uh, Ryan, uh, Sean DeForest car. And me saying about Shane DeVolder maybe saving equipment, I don't think he wants to save equipment. It looks like he wants to get racing with these guys up front. These are some of the same guys he's going to race with all week long in this uh, tour of California. So he, if he's going to know how he's going to do, he's got to do it here tonight with uh, Shane DeVolder into 44S in that third spot. Tricky Troy losing a little bit of ground now to Kellen Chadwick. Is Chadwick working? If you've noticed, he's moved up about a width, car width uh, in the Oh, turn. yeah, moved up, protecting his line. It looks like it may possibly be a little bit smoother in the in the middle of the track, but man, that car is really that car is really smooth and on rails. But Tricky Troy just trying everything he can, just possibly just not getting a chance to get close to Kellen or get in the position that he wants you to make the pass. Up at the front, Kellen Chadwick, uh, Tricky Troy, Folder, Shane DeVolder, Jim Pettit. Uh, the Flying Hawaiian, Kimo Arata, Anthony Giuliani, John McDougall, and Sean DeForest is your running order. Five laps to go, five laps to go for the A main feature. And it looks like Troy kind of pushed up, and it's going to allow Kellen Chadwick to get away from him. Shane DeVolder still in third, Jim Pettit, Kim, uh, Kimo Arata. Looks like Folger's not having quite as good exit, turn exit, as Kellen is. He's getting into the turn better, but he's getting off uh, not as well. Once again, it's going to be Madugo going around in the middle of turn three and four. This time, I don't think they're going to bring out the caution. He can Coming keep it running. Coming up four laps to go, and Kellen Chadwick is just moving. 
smooth as butter that car is getting around the middle of uh, turns one and two. One car. Oh, we got Anthony Giuliani. Steam coming out of that. I don't know if he hit the wall or if he just lost um, lost fluid containment in the radiator. I don't know he may have overheated oh, yeah, the radiator. Like he possibly may have either just went up there, tapped the wall a little bit, and some busted something, or not seeing any tire tracks into the wall or damage on the wall. So I think he just kind of lost a motor or something. So hearing he he broke uh, sliding into the turn. So that was not a wall incident. This is good. Giuliani in the 15G car. Um, had been running the past few years in the IMCA Sport Modified ranks. Got himself a very nice dirt modified. Has run well with it. But not as well as Kellen Chadwick and Tricky Troy Folger are here tonight. But look, look who's in third. Where does he come from? After being dead last um, in his heat race and working his way up to working his way up to third, um, Jim Pettit. He, I think he has a possible shot to win this. He did win. Let me remind you, he did win the uh, Mike Cecil uh, last week at Watsonville. Um, possibly trying to take home another W here at um, Antioch Speedway against, I would say, two of the top guys in California, Tricky Troy and uh, Kellen Chadwick. Jim Bennett in the six car started at the back of the pack in that 12th starting spot. And here he is up the third. This happened last time out. Um, the last couple races he has finished in the second spot. The last three races, I think, in the second spot. And just he's knocking on the door. He did have a win back in June. He's going to get some more, that's for sure. But he does it quietly. He's not there. He's at the back of the back. Suddenly... Get three laps remain. There's Jim Pettit in third spot. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I'm telling you, Kellen Chadwick's car is just butter smooth just on the inside and uh, the middle of the track. Let's see if he can hold on to that lead with uh, three laps to go. As the green flag drops, Kellen Chadwick gets a jump on the field. Tricky Troy is the second. Tricky's going to try to slide in the inside, but no. Kellen's still going to dig off of turn two. Down the straightaway, coming into turn three. I tell you, Tricky Troy is trying everything, but he's still still not able to get past or make a move. Now Tricky Troy's got to deal with Jim Pettit, who's now on his inside. He's going for the second spot. Two laps remain. Coming up off turn number two. Down the back straightaway. Jim Pettit has to fall back in line. White flag coming out this time by Kellen Chadwick saying, you guys keep battling. That's going to help me out. I'm going to keep pulling away. Chadwick into turn number one with the lead. And the turn number one coming out of turn number two, and he's kind of pulling on uh, Tricky Troy. Tricky Troy throwing everything he could. But Kellen Chadwick's going to end the streak and take home the checker flags. Kellen Chadwick. Second's going to go to Tricky Troy Folger, and third's going to go to Jim Pettit. Fourth to uh, Sean DeForest, and fifth, rounding out the top five, is uh, Kimo Aretta. And John McDougall in the sixth spot. Last lap of 15.40, second lap, 87.662 miles an hour. I'm going to head down for victory lane. Not that many cars here, but what an exciting feature for you guys here on um, Antioch Speedway TV as Kellen Chadwick's going to take home the win tonight. Chadwick pulling around after going through the scales. Pulling in Antioch Speedway Victory Lane here on the front stretch. Got to get unbuckled, get his helmet off. They got the coolest trophies here at Antioch Speedway. It's door cards. As you see, Chad Chadwick bringing them out. Kellen getting unbuckled. Coming around for a 25-lap main event, taking home the win here tonight. Getting set, I'm sure, for Wednesday night back here. And you can see all the action. Tricky Troy pulling up. Kellen Chadwick pulling coming out of the race car. Kellen, man, that car was on a rail. Yeah, it's uh, not bad. You know, we haven't uh, 
We haven't run this car, uh, this car a whole lot. This is only my second night racing it. I've hot lapped it once and then ran it once and then uh, trying to get ready for that speed week thing coming up here this week. So wanted to turn a couple more laps in this thing and try to have both cars ready to go. Um, but yeah, pretty pretty happy with it. I mean, the uh, racetrack was pretty good, so that helps. But um, but it turned well and made good traction, did everything it's supposed to do, so I'm pretty happy with it. You had a few shots where uh, Tricky Troy was, had took a shot at you and tried to get some... Uh get underneath you and get around you but for the most part he couldn't touch you yeah i figured he was going to be there um like i said i knew that uh the track was pretty good it was pretty pretty hammered down so i knew that uh when i started catching lap traffic there i didn't really have a whole lot of time to wait kind of needed to go but um kind of got to be smart at the same time you know so um i don't know we uh we're getting there going in the right direction i think you had some of the fastest laps I've recorded all year long. You were o consistently over 88 mile an hour average around this racetrack. Normally this year it's been like 85, so this car was just flying. Yeah, no, like I said, the track was really good and it was, uh, the car was really good, so that helps. But yeah, it's just uh, get her in there and get her turn and put her back to the floor. Are you going for all, uh, all six nights for the California tour? Well, we're going to start out that way. Um, I got to work all week, so we're going we're gonna to go race and then haul butt home and then go to work in the morning for a half a day or so and then haul ass again. So we, uh, we're going to start that way, and, and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we make the whole week. If we make the whole week, that means things are going pretty well. All right, Callan Chadwick, congratulations taking up tonight's IMCA Dirt Modified main event here at Antioch Speedway. I appreciate it. Thank you. Well, while they're here, let me sneak on over here. to Tim, if you'll follow me along over to this side. Yeah, I did actually, asshole. <laughs> Tricky Troy Folger, you took shots, but you couldn't quite get around. Let's step over this way a little bit for the TV camera here. Couldn't quite get around Kellen, but uh, you still ran really fast and really good. Yeah, definitely. I had a good car. Um, just sucks getting tore up every week by people that spin out in front of you. And, you know, it, it is what it is, but... Uh, Sucks we got the car all tore up and we had a good car just didn't have no time to work on it and but I had hats off to everybody that helped me tonight and uh track crew for working their butts off and everybody helps huh? Yeah. So I mean it's it's good run and Kellen's great, you know, Jim's one of the best and it's just awesome to run with these guys and just sucks to get a tore up race car and it is what it is, I guess. Did you learn anything for Wednesday night? Because you, you were, looked like you were struggling a little bit more coming off the turn as opposed to what Kellen was. Yeah, definitely. Just like, I would like to work on it a little bit, but I guess I'm going to leave these bottle panels on here for, this, for a Wednesday night. <laughs> Tricky Troy Folger finished in second. Congratulations. Step over here to uh, Jim Pettit. Uh, Jim, man, you had to do it the hard way. Start at the back of the pack and work your way forward. And it, it, as I was talking in the broadcast up there, you're real quiet, and then suddenly, look, it's the end of the race, and there's Jim Pettit sitting in third place. Yeah, uh, you know, we got some damage in the heat race also, uh, just a racing deal. Um, we didn't get the tune on the car as much as we'd like to because we were, we were repairing broken parts. So, I mean, coming from the back, back up to third, you know, it's a good finish for us. We got beat by two good cars tonight. You know, Kellen, hats off to him on his first win of the year. Oh, it's actually a second win of the year. And, uh, you know, it's always tough running with Troy. So, you know, third place isn't too bad finishing behind those two guys. You uh, had a shot there at the last restart. You got underneath Troy, but couldn't quite finish the pass. Looked like you, just that very bottom lane just wasn't quite holding the, holding the tires as much. Yeah, we made the move to try to get it to work, and, and but like I said, we just didn't have enough time to do what we needed to do for the car. I'm not making excuses. It's just we, weren't, we didn't have what we needed. We were bouncing too much. Uh, we broke a chain in the left rear, and we didn't have time to fix it, so I had to run the whole race without a chain on the left rear. So the car's leading way over too far on the right and it's taking some traction out of the car. It's just a bunch of little things. It all adds up and comes back and it affects you at the end. Um, we were a third place car at the best. We didn't really have anything for Troy or, or Kellen. Last couple times out, seconds, this time a third. Not a bad way to run. No, not it's bad. not winning. No, it's not winning, but at least we're there and uh, we're in the hunt. And that's the main thing. All right, good luck in this week's California tour. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. All right, Jim Pettit, driver of the 6 IMTA Modified. Thank you very much. Congratulations. And with that, this time I can tell you the IMCA Sport Modified are coming out for their 20 lap main event. That comes up next.
With that, we're going to IMCA Sport Modified Racing on the point. Out of Livermore, California, Matthew Elmore. Outside the front row, uh, front row it's out of Brentwood, it's Ryan Graham. And in the second row on the inside, you have the 15P, uh, the Kid Smooth, uh, Andrew Pierce. And to his outside, you have the 42D, the 42J, I'm sorry, um, out of Pittsburgh, California, uh, Jason Jennings. Jennings winning heat race number two in the fifth starting spot, the 19 C of Tom Climates Jr. out of Oakley and the 17B of Kevin Brown, also out of Oakley, California. And in your fourth row, you have the 112 uh, Chuck Crash Golden. And to his outside out of Brentwood, California, you have the 2C uh, Trevor Climates. And your fifth row, the inside winner of heat race number one, it is our 2019 defending champion, the Iceman, Tommy Fraser. Outside of him, it is the 76 car, a winner, uh, champ, past champion in the limited late models, trying to do it in the sport modifieds out of Oakley. It's Mark Garner. And then the number, and the next row, in the 70, 75A, you have Anthony Wellborn, and inside to, uh, to his outside, and the 156, you have uh, Jacob Haas. And row number seven to 262 on the inside, Jeff, uh, excuse me, Tony Pfeiffer out of Modesto, California, and the 325 of Tyler Brown out of Oakley, California. And that's going to round up your line. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, one more car of the M27. That's going to be the kid, Jacob Mallet Jr. He did not make the call. We do believe he uh, uh, blew a motor yeah, in his heat correct. race. He did so. blew, a, blew a motor in his heat race. but That's why he didn't make the gonna call. That's going to be our lineup for the Sport Mod feature. Looks like they're going to get ready to drop the green flag. Lights out. Green flag coming out right now. We got the uh, 19E of Matthew Elmore on the point. Green flag in the air down the front straightaway. On his outside is Ryan Graham down into turn number one. Elmore on the inside. Graham on the high side. Graham, uh, Elmore slipped up the hill. Graham has to get out of the gas. We're four wide going down the back straightaway into turn number three. Four wide racing. Oh, it looks like Jason Jennings is going to slide into Kevin Brown. He wants that win badly. And uh, it's going to be, oh, I think dead even at the line possibly. I think Elmore had it by about six inches, but now Jason Jennings on that high side. That high side once again pays off going down the back stretch, but Elmore doesn't give it up. He dives into turn number three. Here comes Kevin Brown. He does a bonsai move into turn three, pushes up the hill. Jason Jennings is going to lead the first two. Elroy in second place with Kevin Brown. Kid smooth in fourth, and here comes Trevor Clymans. Mark Garner there in the fifth spot. Uh, behind him, then we got Tom Climbing Jr., Anthony Wellborn, Tommy Fraser. The 28 of Ryan Graham is back to the about the 10th spot there. Back up front, Jason Jennings pulling away over uh, the 19E of Matthew Elmore. It looks like Jason Jennings is putting a hurt on the field tonight. He is moving as he gets down the back stretch. Trevor Climbing and Kevin Brown are going to do battle. That's the, that's the battle you're watching on your TV screen right now. It's the battle for second spot. Three wide coming up off turn number four at the line. Give it to Elmore, then Clymans, and then Brown. But now put Clymans up into the second spot. Cl uh, Kevin Brown into the third spot. Our leader spins in turn number three. Jason Yellow flag Jenny. is out. Jason Jennings throws it away going into turn three. All by himself, Jason Jennings spins in turn number three and spins out of the lead. That's going to put, I think it's going to put 19E of Matthew Elmore in the lead because you go back to the last lap and he was the one that crossed the line ahead of the other two. So he will be the leader, the 19E of Matthew Elmore. Oh yeah, Jason Jennings had a nice run. He was really kind of running away with the field. Unfortunate to kind of see him uh, lose it right there in turn three. But, Wiley, do you think he can come back up to the field with only with 15 laps to go? That car was very fast. He might have a chance, but he's got to get up through a lot of race cars right now. So, I definitely think he will uh, make a large chunk of the way. I don't know that he can get all the way to the point because I think Trevor Clymans or one of these other guys, maybe Mark Garner, if they get out in front, they're going to pull away and put some distance between themselves and the other others in this field also let's not forget about the Iceman Tommy Frazier our last year's track champion just kind of sitting back there patiently waiting he likes to really kick it on when the last you know 10 to 8 laps start to come on that's when he starts to really pressure and get up to the front 
So Trevor Kleiman takes the high side. He's going to put Kevin Brown down on the low side. Kevin Brown took home a main event win last year in that 17B. Trevor Kleiman did not make the full season yet last year. He had to uh, take some time off. And he uh, is back for pretty much every week this year that I've seen so far. So coming around to the green flag this time, light is out. Matthew Elmore on the grass. Here comes Trevor Kleiman's on the high side. That's that case where I was talking about. Elmore's down on the low side. When they step on the gas, they give Trevor Kleiman's a high side, and oh. there he goes. Mark, Mark Garner. Garner hops the wheel, and he almost went over. He really bicycled going into turn two. He went over the wheel of Kevin Brown. And, oh, then, and I uh, think he broke something. And then uh, Tommy Frazier went over his wheel. So he didn't, uh, He not only went over somebody, somebody went over him. And I believe yellow, yellow, yellow Frazier. for Mark Gardner. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you've seen that, but he literally bicycled going into turn two. I thought that car was going to go over. So Mark Garner, not to, I was interviewed uh, interviewed him live on Facebook earlier and talked about the fact he's he's had a lot of good runs this year, has not had the finishes to go with those runs, just has not had the good luck. I really think it's his driving style. And him getting the new car, I believe it's, it's just it's better for him. Um, but yeah, he's he's gonna he's eventually gonna get that win here. I, I see it coming for him down down the line. But um, yeah, just a little bit misfortunes and some things that just didn't happen in his favor just kind of caused him not to you know either get that win or that top five. He destroyed a race car down in the uh, duel at the desert last year, down in Las Vegas. Um, had a really bad wreck down there, destroyed that car. So it was nice to have him back. And again, he just he stepped up, uh, moved away from what was the limited late models, became super stocks this year, and he's concentrating on the uh, sport modifieds. And he is going to get a win. He runs well enough. He just got to get the monkey off his back and learn. It's a different car than the limited late models. Trevor Clemens is our leader. Kevin Brown in the second spot. Looks like Andrew Pierce is going to be third. Fourth will be Tom Clemens Jr. Fifth, Chuck Golden. Sixth, Anthony Wellborn. Seventh, the Iceman Tommy Frazier. Eighth is Jacob Haas. Ninth is going to be, I believe that's a 262 of Tony Pfeiffer. Uh, tenth will be Jason Jennings. Eleventh is Mark Garner. Twelfth is the 19E of Matthew Elmore. Twelfth uh, is the 325 of Tyler Brown. And 13th, just pulled into the infield, the 28 car of Ryan Graham. Oh, yeah, it looks like he came back out like he was ready to line up with the field. And it looks like he's going to park it in the infield. Not sure what's wrong with the 28 sport mod of uh, Ryan Graham. But it looks like we are getting ready to go green. Andrew Pierce and um, I believe that's Kevin Brown's going to trail Trevor Clemens. Coming into turn three. Clemens starting way high. And green flag's going to drop. Trevor Clemens is going to get the jump. Kid smooth, Andrew Andrew Pierce. Oh, he's going to make a little mistake. He's going to probably allow, yes, he's going to allow Kevin Brown to get back around him. And here comes the Iceman in the inside. Oh, oh, we have a yellow, 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 yellow. Yellow flag yellow. is out for Tyler Brown. Spin over in turn uh, number one. First time out in that race car, he was... Uh, yeah, I talked to him earlier, and he said, sorry for my appearance. He's, he was a bit greasy and stuff. He said, I'm just getting this car out here. They've been thrashing on that thing to get it out here first time out with that 325. Oh, yeah, it's a nice-looking car. I've seen him post a, little, a couple pictures on it on Facebook. I know he's a – I believe he's a rookie out here, right? Um, yes. Into the class. Um, His brother has been racing out here as well, uh, Jeff Brown. All right, let's see if we can get that, uh, get him pushed away, get him refired. Trevor Kleiman's on the point. Kevin Brown in the second spot. Andrew Pierce in the third spot. Fourth, Tom Kleiman's Jr. Fifth is the uh, 112 of Chuck Golden. Sixth, Andrew Wellborn. Seventh is the Iceman, Tommy Frazier. Eighth is the 156 of Jacob Haas. Ninth is the 262 of Tony Pfeiffer. Tenth is J uh, Jason Jennings. Eleventh, Mark Garner. Twelfth is Matthew Elmore. And thirteenth will be the 325 of Tyler Brown. That's your full field rundown right now in the IMCA Sport Modifieds. Thanks for tuning in to Antioch Speedway TV, AntiochSpeedway.tv. Keep an eye on the Facebook pages at Antioch Speedway Announcer, Antioch Speedway by Promotions, and AntiochSpeedway.tv Facebook pages for upcoming shows. Uh, 
in the next in the near future we're going to start producing some shows as well green flag in the air the green flag drops trevor Kleiman is going to take the lead andrew pierce kid smooth as kevin brown washes up oh and they're four wide and there goes the iceman here he comes he jumps and from seventh to fourth in one turn like i said he likes to come on in the near end of the races Uh, Trevor Clements coming up off turn number two. Already got about a five-car length lead over the kid. Andrew Pierce got his best career finish at Watsonville last week when he finished third in the main event. One car coming to a stop at turn number two. Yellow flag is out there again. It looks Tyler like we Brown. have a yellow once again. It's going to be for the 325 of uh, Tyler Brown. So that will be his night as that will be second yellow Flag and just hearing a call over the radio for a hook to the rear. So he is done for the night. Not a bad first outing with a brand new race car. Everybody just got to get used to the car, you know, a little bit different um, changes and stuff, getting used to the car for uh, some, some, some of the guys and girls that are racing out here. Can't wait to have everybody back in the stands uh, at some point and... Who knows? The way things are going, it may not be till next year. Maybe it'll be our big show coming up. I haven't talked about this yet. Uh, kind of stopped on the schedule, but uh, real quick, got into the big kahuna on Labor Day weekend, right? September 12th, wingless sprints, Delta Dorf, Super Stocks Valley, four bangers. Uh, the 16th of September, the Test and Tune of 19th, these IMC Modifieds, IMC Sport Modifieds, Hobby Stocks, Saturday the 19th. Saturday the 26th will be... The wingless sprint cars, the BCRA Midgets, the Super Stocks, Tri-State Pro Stocks, and the Hard Tops. That's going to be the Chet Thompson uh, tribute race. In October, we got a lot of racing that we'll talk about here in just a minute. Uh, well, let's talk about it now. I thought we are getting ready to go back to green. We're still working on it. The Bill Bowers Memorial Race, that was last year's West Coast Nationals. Oh, yeah. Last year's West Coast Nationals. Now, it's currently, it's going to be called the Bill Bowers Memorial. I believe it's in honor of um, Bill Bowers', Bill Bowers father. Um, yep. But um, them changing the name to that, hopefully, um, so like I said, it brings out a, another big car count. Like I said, I, I love, as me as a fan and as an announcer, I love to see the best of the West. And that you know. one's going to be big. And there, there's going to be, I can't announce it yet, but expect a big announcement on the TV package on that one. But they have a, that's a three-day show. There's a practice night on Thursday night, October 1st, October 2nd. It's the Bill Bauer Memorial Bill Bowers Memorial Night 1, and on the 3rd is Bill Bowers Memorial Night 2. 5,000 to win for the Modifieds, 2,500 to win for the Sports Modifieds. Oh, yeah. And like I said, uh, Kellen Chadwick taking home the win. But that brung out some big talent here. Let's not forget we had um, our IMCA Super Nationals winner out of Bakersfield, California, uh, Ethan Dotson, came out all the way to the Antioch Speedway to come showcase his talent. Uh, Trip Gaylord out of... Um, Colorado came out here driving uh, one of Kellen Chadwick's cars. So we'll see who'll come out here this year. And um, I think it'll be a fun big show again once um, once again. And then on the following weekend, October 10th, another big show, the Donna Sories and Larry DeMintz Hall of Fame night, uh, wingless sprints, super stocks, hobby stocks, Valley four bangers. Then a two day show on the October 16th and 17th, the dwarf car open. Then the hobby stock open $1,000 to win for the uh, Jay's Mobile Welding hobby stocks on October 24th, along with the super stocks. Thursday, uh, excuse me, October 31st, Halloween night, candy for kids if we can have you, the modified, sport modified, wings, wingless sprints, super stocks, and then our big right, big race of the year. I'll talk about that in a minute. We're getting ready to go back green flag racing. Trevor Kleiman's on the point. Andrew Pierce takes the high side, puts uh, uh, Tom Kleiman Jr. down on the low side, coming around for the green flag. And Trevor Kleiman is going to get across the line. He's going to go into turn three. I really think Trevor Kleiman is really liking that high side. He likes to rail off of that cushion. And Kid Smooth, Andrew Pierce, is going to officially take over the second position. Tommy Kleiman Jr. in third. And, oh, and it looks like he's going to almost take it out. But that's going to move the Iceman up to third position. Once again, we have someone running up front take themselves out of the front running spot, but Trevor Kleiman still on the point. Andrew Pierce in the second spot. He goes into turn number three following the wheel tracks. Not a bad idea to follow the wheel tracks of Trevor Kleiman's around here when you're a 15-year-old young man. Oh, yes. That's Trevor Kleiman. Now, as you can see, Andrew Pierce moves up. He was running the bottom. Now he's running the top, maybe trying to find something to get around Trevor Kleiman's. But like I said, let's not forget about the Iceman. Still, with 10 laps to go. We're halfway done. 10 oh, down, it looks 10 like we have go. a pile up. A pile up in the middle of uh, turn three and four. I can't really see who Anthony, that is. It looks like Anthony Wellborn involved. The 262 of Tony Pfeiffer involved. The 19E of 
Matthew Elmore, I believe that is over there. And one other car looking, uh, look through my monocular here. Tom Climage Jr. involved over there. The 156 also involved. That's the car of Jacob Haas over there. So real quick, let me finish this, uh, the schedule because coming up, we're going racing on Thanksgiving weekend. Black Friday, don't worry about shopping. Come out to the racetrack. We're going racing on Friday the 27th and Saturday the 28th. Turkey night is we're calling it. The IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Modifieds and the Hobby Stock. You can't beat racing on Thanksgiving weekend. Why would you want to be out there in that crazy shopping environment when you could be here? watching the races yeah which is a good thing for california like i said in the west coast we just have we have lovely weather you know year round so it allows us to race i would say more um kind of in our winter months than um some tracks would do in the east coast or the midwest so yeah if growing you're up in the anything, northeast i can tell you you didn't start racing till late april if you were lucky uh real quick andrew pierce let's talk about him real quick the kid's only been racing for three months and here he is running up front Again, yeah. Um, like I said, um, kid smooth. He's just he's just something different. Um, talking to him in the pits, like he's very knowledgeable about racing already at a young age, and I, I look forward to watching him and paying attention to him throughout the years. Um, he's doing a special talent. Uh, top three finish at the uh, Mike Cecil. Um, so yeah. not a small race. Not a small race at all with some big talent there. He did he did fairly well. And now here he is tonight. A lot of good uh, cars here as well. And running second. So his dad ran that car up until three months ago, I think. And then he stepped out, put the kid in, and uh, and he had no racing experience. It started out in the Sport Modify, and here he is running for another win, or running for a win here at Antioch Speedway. So uh, good job by Andrew Pierce. Lights out. We're going green flag racing this time by. We've got nine laps remaining. Trevor Kleiman's looking for his first win on the year. Green flag in the air down the front straightaway. Underneath the flag stand into turn number one. Trevor Kleiman's working the high line. The Iceman, Tommy Fraser, down low. Andrew Pierce, I think that time, because of who was next to him, may have made a mistake. He might have wanted to be on the down low side because he knows Trevor Kleiman's restarts high. And like I said, the Iceman, Tommy Fraser, really puts it on when it, the last eight to ten laps. And it looks like now he's applying that pressure to Trevor Clemens, and he's digging off a of turn two. Uh, it's going to pop and give a little they shot touch. of the Make it clean, but here comes the Iceman. Tommy Fraser up to the second spot again. That's where... Andrew Pierce learned something on that restart. It's not always starting on the high side. Sometimes you want to start on the low side if you know the guy out in front is going to start on the high side where Trevor Clemens always does. That battle for the lead in three and four. Coming up off turn number four, Clemens working the high line. He's got Tommy Fraser right in his wheel tracks going down the front straightaway. With seven laps to go, Trevor Clemens still holding on to the lead. And don't forget, last week was a three-way battle between him, Guy Allward and the number 12 with Guy Allward taking a win. But it looks like right now, it looks like Tommy Clemens, I mean, I'm sorry, it looks like uh, Tommy Frazier is uh, just stalking. Uh, it looks like we're going to have a yellow flag. I'm not sure for what. Got, got some debris over in turn number two on the exit of turn number two. Got Matt over there picking it up. Uh, so we're going to be have seven laps remain. Trevor Clemens, the ice man, Tommy Frazier, Andrew Pierce, Chuck Golden. Look at Chuck. Running up there in the fourth spot. One of his better runs. Kevin Brown into fifth, fifth spot. Six. Hey, you asked. We were talking about him earlier. Early leaders. Spun out of the lead. Look who's in sixth spot. Yeah, can, coming back up through the field, like I said, uh, Jason Jennings. Pretty quiet, but you never know. He could possibly peek into the top four, maybe even the top three if, um, if he's lucky. So we got seven laps remain in this 20-lap main event for the IMCA Sport and Modifieds. Um, Again, folks, keep your, your quote-unquote TV, your phone, your computer, wherever you're watching on AntiochSpeedway.tv right here. This is a long-term deal. This is not a uh, one-and-done thing or a two-and-done thing. This is a th at least three-year commitment um, for this TV stuff for Antioch Speedway. As, you know, it came about because we just had some issues uh, as having to stream without having fans here, and we just had some issues with the streaming services. Not that they did anything wrong, it just, we wanted more control. We wanted to be able to help out and make sure we had things the way we needed them, and so that's what we have here. 
on AnyoxSpeedway.tv and really appreciate everyone who's been streaming here from here all year long. And we're going to have uh, Speed Shift. will be back on Wednesday night. Don't forget that for the because they have the entire California tour. You don't want to miss that. But right oh, now, yeah, we're sure. going green flag racing. Uh, the green flag drops. Trevor Kleinman is once again is going to take the lead. It looks like Andrew Pearson once again is a little racy with the Iceman. And he's going to possibly, potentially, no. The Iceman still has the lead. Oh, it looks like Trevor Kleinman's kind of let off of the gas a little bit. Oh, and Jason Jennings once again loses it, coming into turn three. Battle for the lead into turn number one. The Iceman Tommy Frazier was down inside Trevor Kleiman's last. One car spins around Tom Kleiman's Jr. up in turn number two. See if he can get that thing going before we go yellow. Battle for the lead off turn number four. Yellow flag back out. 19 car, the 19 C of Tom Kleiman's Jr out of Oakley, spun all by himself over there in turn number two. Somebody leaves the racetrack. I didn't see who that was, just all the back end of a car. Uh, one car leaves the racetrack. Now Tom Climens Jr. gets rolling. But uh, had a battle coming up off turn number, or going into turn number three, a lap before that happened. Tom Climens, or excuse me, Tommy Frazier dove in there hard and got side by side with Trevor Climens. Oh yeah, and like I said, it looks like the track, um on both ends of the track, looks like they're building up a nice cushion. As you can tell, the middle and the inside are starting to get black, so you can tell the rubber is starting to lay down. Those guys kind of really relying on the cushion right now to get around this get around this track. So if you notice, we talked about two restarts ago. Andrew Pierce took the high side, put Trevor, uh, uh, excuse me, the Iceman down on the low side. Last restart, uh, Fraser took the low side. He chose the high side this time. Oh, yeah. They're they're trying to they're trying to mess with Trevor's head, get inside there, and maybe allow him to make a mistake. Um, he learned that lesson that Trevor starts high and he wants to go. He, I don't know. That's backwards from what I would have thought. Trevor anyway. is clearly committed to that high side. He lane, is. It looks like. Given the one to go signal, next time by we're going to go racing. Six laps remain in this 20 lap main event for the IMCA Sport Modifieds. On this beautiful Saturday night here in Antioch, California. 84 degrees still at 8, uh, 8.34 at night. Can't be not be believe how nice the weather is here tonight. Coming around, Trevor Clemens picking up the speed. Some of these drivers, they like to restart really slow. Trevor Clemens is one who likes to bring him around nice and fast. Coming around to the green flag this time. And it's going to be the green flag drops. Trevor Clemens is going to pull away with the lead. Andrew Pearson, the Iceman. Oh, this time the Iceman kind of pushes up. He's going to lose three spots because of it. Loses four spots with Pierce there on the low side. He was actually in the third or third spot. Oh, One car spin, kinda, oh. three, four car spin over in turn number four. Kevin Brown, the uh, Chuck Golden, tr uh, Tom, Tommy Fraser, and the 156 of Jacob Haas all spin in turn number So the 17B of Kevin Brown started that spin. Yeah, and the, unfortunately, uh, with the Iceman was running a second, kind of gets caught up into that one. And that's a bummer for him. He went from second back to sixth in the second turn, but 17B of Kevin Brown started that. As he was more than halfway around, Chuck Golden came along and kind of finished him off. Tommy Frazier had nowhere to go, and neither did the 156 of Jacob Haas. And I think the Iceman is going to pull off, and he's going to, I'm pretty sure he's going to end it for the night, possibly. See if we have five or six laps remaining in this 20 lap main event for the IMCA Sport Modifieds. But Trevor Climbers, let's not forget, still holding on to that lead after all the all the pressure from uh, the Iceman and Kid Smooth, still holding on to the lead. Let's see if he can win this one tonight. So just in case you're interested to know on this whole TV thing, we're, we'll have each and every week here at AntiochSpeedway.tv. On nights we're running the IMCA Modifieds or the, and or the Sport Modifieds, we will be simulcast on IMCA TV. Uh, but that's only on nights that we have the IMCA cars out here. Uh, next year, of course, that'll include the IMCA stock cars. I'm excited about them. I'm actually putting a show together on the IMCA stock cars. It'll be coming out on all our platforms. So be on the lookout for that. If you're looking to get in the stock cars, as a lot of people are, that is going to be an awesome class. If you've never seen them race, Check out YouTube. They put on some amazing shows, and they're going to be here at this racetrack coming up next year. Oh, yeah. You used to watch them on YouTube and at Speed Shift TV at Marshalltown, and it gets good. So, but 
Right now, we got the IMCA Sport Modifieds trying to finish up their main event. Five laps, Urbane. Waiting to hear to confirm. Yep, five laps remain for the IMCA Sport Modifieds. 20 lap main event. So, should be a double, so double yeah. easy for me to say, double file restart. <laughs> a little tongue twister for you, right? Yeah. All right, pulling that car, Chuck Golden into the infield. Golden in that 112 car. Doubling him up. So again, Pierce this time has the high side or low side choice. Where is he going to choose? He takes the high side again. This time puts, uh, look who's up in the third. Mark Garner has climbed Hey, his like lane. I said, Mark Garner could possibly, you know. And, and look who's in fourth. Jason, Jason Jennings. Jennings. <laughs> Mark Garner up to third. J uh, excuse me, fourth. Third. Fourth is Jason Jennings. On the inside, outside of him is a 19C, if not mistaken, of Tom Clemens Jr., then the 156 of Jacob Haas, and the 17B of Kevin Brown. Green flag in the air. Yeah, green flag in the air. Trevor Clemens once again up on that cushion. Now it looks like Andrew Pierce is going to push a little bit. Here comes Mark Garner in the inside. Garner came into the night second in points. This is a points night. So a lot of the drivers that didn't show up running for points, they are going to lose some points here tonight. Mark Gar Garner down to turn number one. He's lost a little bit of ground to uh, Clymans. Andrew Pierce gave him a little shot coming up off turn number four last time. There's Jason Jennings. That car is out of rail. He's trying to get around Pierce. He dives low. He's got Tom Clymans Jr. to his inside. Meanwhile, Trevor Clymans saying bye, guys. Yeah, Trevor Climans just looks like he has this kind of maybe possibly locked in. He's kind of running away from the field. But the battle between uh, Andrew Pierce, Mark Garner, and Jason Jennings from dead last. I want to not let's not forget about that. Two laps remain. Trevor Climans goes down to turn number one, but the battle for second down there. Mark Garner high, Andrew Pierce low. That battle for second up off turn number two. The high side pays off for Garner. He gets a better run off the turn. Pierce falls in line. He goes low again. White flag in the air this time for Trevor Climans. Yeah, white flag in the air. And like I said, he, I think he has this one sealed up. The battle is going to be between uh, Andrew Pierce and Mark Garner. Kid smooth. I tell you, Andrew, he has it on the inside. Mark Garner on the outside. And coming to the trekker flag, I mean, the 2C of Trevor Clemens. And it looks like Andrew Pierce is going to hold on for a second place over Mark Garner. Jason Jennings from dead last comes to fourth. And then it's going to be uh, kind of spinning it out. After he crosses the finish line, it's going to be a Tommy Tommy Clemens Jr. Finishing in the fifth spot. Last lap is 16.74. Second lap, 80.645 miles an hour. I'm going to head down for victory lane. here waiting for our winner Trevor Clymans to come out and around getting across the scales thanks again ladies and gentlemen for tuning in to Antioch Speedway TV I think he's a little happy Trevor Clymans getting the belts off Big smile on his face as he climbs out of the race car.
Trevor Clemens. Man, Woo! you were on a rail. It's been a long time. Has been a long time. Congratulations. It was well worth it. So what was the, what was the hardest part for you tonight? Um, that 15 car. Kept showing me his nose. A little Andrew Pierce accent down there. Oh, yeah. I knew he was there. Get your mic up a little closer if you would. I knew he was there. I wasn't going to let him have it. He's going to have to work harder than that. So you ran the high line most of the night, especially on the restarts. Uh, is that where your car was really hooked up better than, uh, or you just wanted to protect that line? Uh, the bottom was a little dry, and I love the top, and I'm not going to give it up. If it's there, I'm up there. That's what we were talking about in the broadcast about uh, whether Andrew did right by choosing the high side to follow behind you or get down low on the restart. Uh, Tommy Fraser once started low, got up next to you going down the front straight away and then went hives. But you had the line. I mean, you kept it and they couldn't get near you. Oh, yeah. I wasn't going to give it up. I knew there wasn't enough on the bottom. So what's this do for you for this upcoming week? Are you going to run the tour or at least come out on Wednesday night? I will be here Wednesday, but I am most likely passing on the rest. All right, so Wednesday night, you got a good feel for what the racetrack is like here, and you got a good handle on your race car. Anything you got to do to it in the next three days? Uh, looks like I got to fix a quarter panel. That's probably about it. So congratulations, Trevor Climbers, taking home your first win in uh, quite a while. Yeah, first one this year. Hopefully it's not the last. No, the way you've been running, I think you're uh, going to get out of roll. Thank you. Trevor Clements, congratulations. Let's head on over here. Andrew Pierce. Let's go around the other side of the race car, if you would. Thank you, Bubba. So, uh, Andrew, just so everybody knows, they can watch. Uh, we got to keep coming over this way. We got a pole in the way. Watch this week's Wiley's Race Report. We did an interview, and it's good luck. I mean, you finished second. Yeah, we started up front, and we finished up front. We didn't tear up anything, really, and here we are. We're in podium, another podium. As we were talking about earlier, you've only been racing for, what, three months or so, and you're running like a veteran. Well, I'm trying. Some of these guys like Trevor, they're hard to beat. Mark's been doing it for a while. Jason's, Jason's very good, but he's rookie, too. I mean... There's a good competition out here. Getting up front, running with uh, behind Trevor and running next to the Iceman Tommy Frazier and Mark Garner. Yeah. I assume you're learning a lot doing that. Yeah. Like Tommy, he's he's great. These guys are hard to beat. If you're beating them, it's, it's something special. All right. So last week you got a third place. Yeah. Tonight you get a second. Mm -hmm. You know what you have to do next, right? Yeah, I got to win. You got to win. Wednesday night, right? Uh, we'll see. Are you do are you doing the whole tour? Um. I don't know if we're doing the whole, maybe a couple, but we didn't tear anything up tonight, so we'll be there. All right, so Andrew Pierce finished second in tonight's IMCA Sport and Modify. Congratulations. Who, who helps you get on the racetrack? Uh, my mom, my dad, Pro Motorsports, HRT, Kenny New with uh, IS, ASI, and uh, everyone else on the car, Vaca Valley, everyone. It's Congratulations, Andrew Pierce. Thanks. All right, where's he at? Mark Garner. Hey, I, I think talking to me is good luck because I talked to you earlier too, and here you are at a podium finish. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was pretty good out there. Tracks nice, um, two grooves, bottom top, bottom groove, top groove. Um, everything was nice. I kind of got a little bit of crap over here on the side, but whatever. I think went to the back a couple times and just tried to find my way back up. And uh, the car was pretty good. Yeah, you didn't do it the easy way. <laughs> no, I never do things the easy way. That's just the way it goes. Now, we were talking about this during the broadcast. You moved up. You're a past champion in the limited late models that are basically now the super stocks. How much different driving those cars compared to driving an IMCA Sport Modified? Those have a real legitimate motor in it. <laughs> motor difference. Oh, yeah. Hands down. 100% motor. All right. So, uh, are you, you're not doing the whole tour, but you are coming out Wednesday, right? Yeah, I'll be out here Wednesday. Hopefully, we'll see you take the car back to the shop and see what's going on with it and go from there. Didn't hurt you in your points finishing third. Um, I'm not even, I'd like 24, I don't care about points. It's, it's coming out and having fun. Your mind, so. he, he didn't know he was in second and then suddenly found out he was second in points. So. All right, Mark Garner, congratulations. Him and I are going to be doing a little bit of a storytelling coming up here in a, in a soon to be show we got coming up. Mark Garner, congratulations. Thank you. All right, Jason. Um, What's happening? How you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. I'm glad this race is over. 
and you were way out front yeah, we, all by yourself. And yeah, then, yeah. We, um, then we what? were having ignition problems in uh, Watsonville last weekend, and we're trying to sort the bugs out, change the distributor, change it all type of stuff. Don't know what it is. The car's not running right. It basically, I'm one of the very few open motors out here. Class A performance, build one heck of a motor. Um, but they're, they're, I think it's a distributor taking a big dump in it. Uh, whenever I set going into three, I heard a pop. The car snapped around, and I, I, it took me everything to keep it going. But it gave me good seat time. I'm still new at this class. It's a fun class. Track was great. Had a lot of fun, and it's, it's great racing with these guys. A couple years ago, you were running the hobby stocks, sharing time between your dad and your brother and stuff, and, and then uh, took last year off. Yep. Came out yep. this year with a IMCA modified, and you're running like you know how to drive these things, like you've been doing it for a while. I, I have a lot of good people behind me on this car, for uh, my dad being one of them. You know, he if it wasn't for him beating on this thing day in and day out to keep it as straight as possible, even though it looks like it's been through World War III and it's only my 10th race, I think. But, hey, that's all, that's all good. My buddy Greg, he puts in endless hours, too. Uh, those two, they're just amazing. Um, and everybody on this car, they put a lot into it. They help me out through everything. I can't thank them enough. It's been so far an awesome year for this stupid pandemic. Can't wait till this shit's over so we can get fans of the stands and get my family up there and have all our friends back out. Jason Jennings, congratulations on a fourth place finish. And thank you, thank you. again, at the beginning of the race, man, you were on a rail. Yeah. You were driving away from them. So. Yeah. You know, it felt good. And then, like I say, I went into three and I heard a pop and the car snapped around and it took everything to keep it running. Yeah, but it somewhat cleared out and then I got to drive back up through. So. Gave you some good experience. It did give me good experience. All right, Jason Jennings, congratulations. Thank you, sir. And we'll head on over here to the fifth place car. Tom Clements, Jr. Hey, not a bad run, sir. That was good. We had a good time. Did you have fun? Yes, I did. Congratulations, Trevor. So you had a little bit of, you were up front a little more, and you had a little bit of trouble. What, to, what can you tell us? Uh, I got smacked around in the back a little bit, and something's not right. I'll figure it out when I get home. So are you going to run the whole tour? I was looking at running uh, up through Merced. Okay. And then we're going to go down south and visit one of our daughters that's a Marine. So, so family first. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, anyway, good run. Look forward to having you back out here Wednesday night, right? I'll be here Wednesday. Wednesday night. All right. Who helps you get this thing on the racetrack every week? Uh, Clyman's family and BS Racing, East Bay Welding Supply. Um, all my friends and family. We all just put together and make it happen. Tom Clyman Jr., congratulations on a fifth place finish tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it. Uh, Joe, thanks for joining us. Uh, joining the broadcast team. I got a trailer in the way. There we go. Joe Peterson, newest member of the broadcast team here at Antioch Speedway. Joe, great job tonight up there. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you guys for having me. Um, it was a blast. Um, looking forward to being up here again and throughout the season. So, of course, I just want to remind everybody, Wednesday night, got to go back to Speed Shift TV for one night. Um, that is a, the whole tour is a Speed Shift TV tour, so that they are the TV partners for the whole California Speed Week. Excuse me, Speed Week. So, Wednesday night, all the racing action live and direct from Antioch Speedway will be on Speed Shift TV. Next Saturday, we'll be back right here on Antioch Speedway TV. I am so excited about this platform that we have here again. Don't forget, we have a new f official Facebook page. It is Antioch Speedway by Promotions. Antioch Speedway by Promotions. And we also have an even newer Facebook page that just launched today to go along with the TV network. It's called AntiochSpeedway.tv on Facebook. So AntiochSpeedway.tv. AntiochSpeedway.tv web page. That's where you watch the races at. AntiochSpeedway.tv and Antioch Speedway by promotions are our Facebook pages. And of course, my stuff, Antioch Speedway announcer on Facebook and on YouTube. This upcoming week's Wiley's Race Report will have some good stuff with the Andrew Pierce will be on there. Philip Aretta's on there and a little more information, so don't miss that coming up. But again, folks, thank you for tuning in. Joe, for thanks for joining in. Hope you had fun on your first night. And there goes a very interesting IMCA modified. I don't think it's going to pass tech, though. But, Joe, any last thoughts? Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys once again and um, look forward to working with you, Wiley Wade, throughout the season.
as Tom Climbins Jr. pulls away. Just want to say thanks to Joe, thanks to Tim behind the camera, thanks to uh, Bob Hernandez, also one of our camera operators. Thanks to Zach Wilcox, another one of our camera operators. Um, thanks to Joe, thanks to Andrea, thanks to Rich, thanks to E running the scoreboard up there. Thanks to all the officials out here in the field. Thanks to all the DNF crew and folks. Thank you for tuning in to the racing action here on Antioch Speedway TV. Until next week, I'm Wiley Wade. Goodbye, everybody.